This is Britton Golden. He will take it from the goal line. And he gets swarmed out across the 15. Cam Chancellor was there. Nico Thorpe, a couple others as well. And so here comes Carson Palmer and the Seahawks. Now, in a loss against New Orleans last week, Palmer was fantastic. And you see, John. He's won twice with Arizona here in Seattle. Well, listen, it's interesting in talking to these guys. They're extremely confident because they've been successful up here before. They think they have the formula. It's a lot of David Johnson running the football. Carson Palmer says this is not the place you want to drop back and throw 45 times. From the 17, first play goes to David Johnson up the middle and a big hole for David Johnson, who has had an MVP type year. He's got 12 yards, and John, the first meeting in the tie, he ran it effectively. They, and he ran it 33 times. I mean, they, they came after him. And Bruce Arians very much understands you got a bunch of pass rushers for the Seattle Seahawks up front. What's the best way to deal with speedy pass rushers? You run right at them. Johnson has had an unbelievable year. 100 yards from scrimmage, first 14 games of the season. It's never been done before. We'll give it to him again. A little subtle step, and he is wrapped up. Nowhere to go as a Taba Ruman may have been hurt as he holds his wrist after the tackle for no gain on Johnson. So for Bruce Arians and this offense, you know, they have come down to earth a little bit after an unbelievable season last year. Ninth in yards per game, yards per play, only 19th. The explosive plays and the turnovers. No explosive plays compared to last year, and they've turned the ball over a lot. That's those, what, those explosives in the passing game, that's what they thrived on, Kevin. It just hasn't been there in 2016. Here comes a blitz picked up, and not the second and third guy as Palmer is taken down. Vicious rush by Seattle and Michael Bennett on the set. Kevin, Michael Bennett's gonna finish it, but it's KJ Wright who puts the initial pressure right up the middle, and here comes Michael Bennett to finish off Carson Palmer. This offensive line is on their seventh starting line combination this year. They are banged up beyond belief. That doesn't help against one of the better pass rushing teams in the league. Third and 18, and they'll run it. And Johnson gets out of one tackle, but he is buried. What a start for Seattle. Frank Clark just destroyed that play. Now, part of that winning formula up here, Carson Palmer talked about you can't let things snowball. You can't let one bad play become two and three. That's what this crowd does to you. Bruce Arians staying conservative with the draw. They're all right to punt and see if their defense can hold. Fourth and 26, and Matt Weil just signed a couple weeks ago with punt. Low snap, but he gets it off. This is Tyler Lockett. A lot of room. And Lockett is covered well by Arizona that time. As Tony Jefferson on the stop after a 53 yard punt. So here comes Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. 9 4 and 1 on the year. It's been a little up and down. A little Jekyll and Hyde for Russell Wilson. A Pete Farrell production, as they say. First few weeks, all kinds of banged up. Still was 3 and 1. Still played very well with an ankle and a bad knee. Then maybe it caught up to him a little bit. The team was 1 1 and 1. And you see the rating went down a little bit. But then he got hot again, John. Playing through the injuries, maybe getting a little bit more healthy. During weeks 9 through 11, but then this is really punctuated by that five interception game at Green Bay, where the numbers obviously not very good. Tony Jefferson, who is the safety, outstanding safety for Arizona, and made that tackle, gets helped off the field for Arizona. They're already really thin. They just put Tyron Matthew on the IR in that secondary. And Tony Jefferson's really had a Pro Bowl year. He did not make the Pro Bowl, but he's playing as well as anyone at safety. And Kevin, you talk about the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but all Russell Wilson does is that stat just spoke to. He wins. He does. He, the Seahawks are nine and four despite everything funky that's happened this year. And on first down, Wilson will throw it. He's got a wide 
wide open man. It is Lockett for a first down. And now late penalty flags, two of them come on in. And I think this is going to be offensive pass interference. Jermaine Curse clearing out so Lockett could come underneath. Pass interference. Offense number 15. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. And you watch Jermaine Curse. Watch him come up. And yeah, he's really going to put a block on Patrick Peterson. Both officials on it. And Jermaine Curse saying that didn't work too well. You just saw number 34, Harlan Miller. This is how thin the Arizona secondary is. So Matthew just put on IR. Marcus Cooper, their one cornerback, is out today with an injury. Harlan Miller is lining up at safety here. He just got called up from the practice squad, and they called another guy up yesterday, Trayvon Hartfield. So it's a introduce yourself to the defense type moment for that Arizona secondary. First and 20 after the penalty. Here's Wilson. Steps up, fires incomplete. A little bit out in front of Doug Baldwin that time. Take a look at Tony Jefferson. This is on that punt return. And it looks like he runs into his own teammate, then gets fouled upon. Mm. Don't know exactly what happened, but Tony Jefferson got up, needed help off the field, and Kevin, as you spoke to, uh, he's just had a fantastic year. That's a huge loss. On second down, it's a four-man rush. Some trouble. Wilson goes down. Arizona getting pressure with Chandler Jones. Arizona got a lot of pressure on Russell Wilson the first time these two teams played. Well, Chandler Jones has had an extraordinary year. He's just going to push George Fant. Right back. This is a smart rush with Russell Wilson. Stay at the level of the quarterback and then collapse when he wants to push up in the pocket. Chandler, Ch Chandler Jones has been awesome this year after an early trade from the New England Patriots. Third and 23 after the penalty. Fumble on the play. Ball's on the ground. And Arizona has recovered it. Calais Campbell comes up with it in a huge turnover for the Cardinals. Well, like Car Carson Palmer said, you can't let one mistake amplify the next. They play safe, they run the draw, they punt it, and now they come up with the big turnover. Calais Campbell, who had a touchdown last week on a fumble recovery, beats Marcel Reese to the football. This was a defensive match to say the least. The defensive lines just dominated the first time they met in week seven, a 6 6 time. We're the same on the first series here. You know, Kev, watching that film of week eight, I thought it was a beautiful game. Now, I'm a defensive guy, but it wasn't a poorly played game other than the kickers. It was a well played defensive game. But here, a great opportunity for the Cardinals. From the Seattle 23. And they'll run it to Johnson. Good cut. And Johnson gets to the 20. Looked like there could have been more there, but Cam Chancellor in on the tackle. Well, we lost Tony Jefferson already. Remember the Seattle Seahawks playing without perhaps the best safety in football in Earl Thomas. So a lot on the shoulders of Cam Chancellor and this entire defense to pick up that slack because you're talking about their best defensive player in many people's minds. Second and seven. Johnson pulling his way forward. Look at the effort from David Johnson. He is near a first down and he might have it. Just chugging those legs right along. Now they talk about the formula. Again, you've got guys who want to tee off on quarterbacks. What do you do? You run it right down their teeth. I played on a similar defense in Tampa. The people who were successful with us had the patience, had the discipline to just stick with the run and try to wear us out. Bruce Arians understands that. We'll see if he can stay with it. So he'll be a third down and short. And they'll give it to Johnson. And I think that effort gets him the first down. Falling forward with the football. We'll watch the spot from here. Looks like he's got it, and he does. You know, Kevin, of all the great things David Johnson, I think 
you're always looking for where can a guy get better. I think it's these short yardage situations. We saw that 6 6 tie with Bobby Wagner in with Bobby Wagner really standing him up at the one. I think that's something he can improve upon in his game. Three tight ends for Arizona in the game right now. Fake to Johnson. Ponder looking, firing far side. Coming back and making the catch is J.J. Nelson. What a catch, and that will be a first and goal. Well, in that week eight game, J.J. Nelson had three catches for 84 yards. What's impressive here, he uses his physicality, pushing Richard Sherman off him with that arm and then tremendous concentration to bring in the low ball. That's the toughest catch in football. First and goal from the two. Johnson off the gut and he is in. Touchdown Arizona. Bruce Arians said it. We talked about it in the open. When you play the Seahawks, you got to make it a fist fight. And I think the first blow, an uppercut, was just thrown by Bruce Arians, David Johnson, and the Arizona Cardinals. So the fumble by Marcel Reese, the recovery by Calais Campbell, and Arizona, they cash in. They convert a third down, and David Johnson scores his 31st career touchdown in his 31st game play. What a year he has had. David Johnson. That actually now for his rushing touchdowns, his 14th of the year that ties an Arizona franchise record for a single season. Here's the extra point. These have been no short thing. Catton Zero's missed four of them. That one is perfect. And so Arizona quiets the loud crowd here at CenturyLink Field. The fumble by Reese. It was the recovery by Calais Campbell. And then give it. To David Johnson, that's worked plenty. Seven up it, Cardinals. So it was a turnover, and Calais Campbell got it, and they converted to David Johnson with the touchdown run. And it all started on a fumble from Marcel Reese on a third and forever. So now the Cardinals striking first. More touchdowns than we had already the last time they played. Seven nothing. Here's Lockett going to take it way deep. Gets a block. And taken down at the 23. So Seattle will take over. Let's look at that fumble one more time, John. Well, Kev, it's interesting. This caught my eye as we were showing the replay going to break. Watch Marcel Reese. Look at his eyes. He never forms the pocket. He's not expecting this handoff. That threw Russell Wilson for a loop. So Marcel Reese, he arrives a few weeks ago, maybe fully not indoctrinated in this offense, not expecting the fumble or ex not expecting the ball. It turns into a huge turnover, which turned into points for the Arizona Cardinals. And so Seattle football from their own 23. Fake it to Rawls. Wilson pressured. He's in trouble and he goes down again. Marcus Golden who's had a career year that sack number nine and already Arizona with a couple of sacks well, against a guy like Russell Wilson at the quarterback you've got to do your job forget about the handoff you got to get to the contain he runs to his outside leg Russell Wilson feels Calais Campbell inside nowhere for him to go he just takes the loss that's a great play by Marcus Golden doing his job. So two quick sacks from Arizona already on the second possession for Seattle. Here comes a blitz. Wilson gets rid of it quickly. Coming to Jermaine Curse, who makes the play. He's out across the original line of scrimmage. Curse has kind of faded off in the offense a little bit. She bumped back to the number three receiver role. You're still looking at a third and long, or a second, yeah, third and long now. We see the completion, Kevin, but the other thing we see, Calais Campbell hit Russell Wilson. Week eight. Calais Campbell dominated this offensive line of the Seattle Seahawks. They could not block him. James Betcher, the defensive coordinator for Arizona, said it and said it right. This game's going to be won at the line of scrimmage. That's Doug Baldwin in motion. 
Wilson pressured again has to get rid of it and incomplete he was going for Jimmy Graham but DJ Swearinger there to help knock it away so this Arizona defense has come to play and they were in Russell Wilson's face yet again. Calais Campbell with the pressure inside here comes Okafor uh, just compacting that pocket all around him and you make quarterbacks uncomfortable when you put chaos around him. Line of scrimmage is being won early by the Arizona Cardinals. Two series, no carries from Thomas Rawls either. Here is Ryan to punt. Remember, he was in the concussion protocol, but he's back and he booms a beauty. And a fair catch by Patrick Peterson and a flag. We got a penalty flag, four side of the field. So a 50 yard punt from John Ryan with that fake punt against the Rams and then got clobbered. But he's back. Now let's see what the penalty is. Ron Torbord, our referee today. During the kick, holding number 28 in the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. Arizona's ball, first down. I'm out. That is on Justin Bethel. But when we come back, we get to see David Johnson. Now 18 touchdowns on the year total. That leads the NFL. And it's Arizona up in Seattle. Back in Seattle where David Johnson 18 touchdowns it's the most ever in a season for the Cardinals. He's also in the Cardinals record books most scrimmage yards in a season and now tied for most rushing touchdowns in a season. Quite the year. And it's seven nothing Cardinals early. Here's their third possession. Give it to Johnson again. Left side. He's going to fight his way out to the 20. A couple injuries going on early. Let's check in with Pam Oliver. Yeah, Kevin for Seattle defensive tackle Ataba Rubin. He went into the locker room a while ago after the Seahawks first defensive series. Rubin is listed as questionable with an injury to his right wrist. No Tony Jefferson for the Cardinals. The safety has a knee injury. His return is questionable. Kevin. Pam, thanks. And Arizona thin in the secondary. Seattle's relatively thin on the line. They've got a couple guys hurt there too. Or inactive. Second and seven. It's a pitch. Johnson waiting for his blocks and does so nicely. And he's out across the 25, but we get a penalty, so this may be coming back. Thrown by the referee Ron Torbert, likely where holding is usually called. Holding. Offense. Number 84. They are coming from the previous spot. We play second down. That's on Jermaine Gresham, the tight end. Well, Jermaine Gresham has been playing excellent for the Arizona Cardinals as a receiver but also as a blocker that time Ron Torbert catches him on the hold. David Johnson already with eight carries and 20 yards. Second and 17. It's a four man rush. Palmer nearly intercepted. Cam Chancellor all over Gresham. Had a chance at that one in a third and long. We've got our first game break. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. A little AFC update for you with under a minute left in overtime. And what was a wild game? Andrew Frank's 27 yard field goal is good, which means Buffalo officially eliminated and Miami clinches a playoff spot with a Broncos loss tomorrow. Kevin John Cameron. 2 and all without their starting quarterback. How about that with Adam Gase? What a job Adam Gase has done down there. I spent time with them during training camp. They talked about situations like that. Big time coaching job going down in Miami. Meanwhile, third and 17. Palmer sees pressure, steps away, firing it deep. He's got a man. Nelson Sherman is there. That looked good from the get go to Richard Sherman with those long arms. Knocked it down. The awareness of Richard Sherman. He's got a speedster. In JJ Nelson, 428. This guy can fly. All he's doing, though, Richard Sherman, he's looking at Carson Palmer. He knows how far Carson Palmer can throw the ball. He's looking at him saying, he, I don't care if JJ Nelson's running. I know where Carson Palmer's throwing it. Great player, Richard Sherman is. Another Pro Bowl for Sherman this year, his fourth 
And now Wild with a punt. Returnable for Lockett. Near side. Dancing taken down. So the Cardinals special teams, which have hurt them this year, have covered two punts well. Kareem Martin on the stop there. So Seattle's defense does the job. Getting the ball back for the O, but it's 7 0. Cardinals up here at Central Lake Field. We are back in Seattle. Pam Oliver on the sidelines along with John Lynch. I'm Kevin Burkhart. Glad to have you along and a Merry Christmas Eve. Happy holidays to you. Good job juggling the popcorn on the head. And we've got Seattle down 7 0. They're football and they're going to try and get this run game going with Thomas Rawls. And John, pretty obvious talking to Pete Carroll that he knows that's got to be better. And it has to be. I mean, that's you think about the Seattle Seahawks offensively. Russell Wilson, a fantastic player. Look at the yards. You had the big explosion. That was Carolina. He had 103 in the first half. He exploded. What I saw in that game, they got under center and they gave him the ball. They got out of the shotgun. I think the reason they've been in the shotgun prior so much is Russell Wilson was hurt. It was easier for him to be in the gun. Get back under center and wear Thomas Rawls out. Rawls again, trying to fight for it. Not much there. Arizona stacks it up and when you think about Seattle it's always been in Pete's words closing the circle of toughness with the running game right and they've been better the last five weeks there's been some signs as you can see the running backs are, are getting there mainly because Rawls is healthy now he had a, a broken leg but it's not where it has been in the past few years and it needs to improve a lot of that's what's going on up front but I think if you get under center you start running the ball straight ahead it does a couple things it gets that part of the game going it also frees up Jimmy Graham because the play action pass comes alive. Yeah. Another third long third down and eight. Blitz Wilson hit again complete though this time to lock it for a first down. Wilson got decked again and we get a flag I believe on the far side of the field too. So let's see what this is all about. Offside. Defense number 44. Line up in the neutral zone. The penalty is declined. It's only a play. It's a first down. Well, there's Tyler Lockett. This is just called a shallow cross. They create the bunch to create traffic for Patrick Peterson. He's got to fight through that. You try to get on different levels. They don't do it successfully. And Russell Wilson, despite being pressured again, finds Tyler Lockett for the big first down. That was 10 yards. Johnny had a career high game. Seven catches, 130 yards, and the win over the Rams. Starting to come on a little bit. Trying to get that run game going, and that goes nowhere. Corey Peters comes in and makes a heck of a play. They're going to lose a couple. I got to tell you Kevin we had the opportunity the other day to sit down with Tyler Lockett. What an enjoyable young man. I mm. played against his his dad in this league and boy can you tell it's like a coach's son in basketball. This kid has been around football mature behind beyond his years. He's healthy now. He's getting the opportunities and it's starting to really <laughs> pay dividends for the Seattle Seahawks. Thomas Rawls lines up top of the screen as a wide receiver. We get movement and a flag. Arizona may have jumped, so Wilson's going to let it fly for Graham. One hander incomplete, and another flag. So it might have been an offside, but that looks like a pass interference on DJ Swearinger. And just smart on a couple of counts by Russell Wilson. First of all, the hard count. You can do that when you're at home. It's a smart crowd here. And then if you get them offsides, go ahead and throw it up. The worst that can happen is a five yard penalty. The best is a catch or a penalty downfield. There field. were two fouls during the play, play, both by the defense. Offside number 98 is the five. Pass interference number 36 is accepted. Automatic first down. You see Graham and Swearinger going at it, and the PI on Swearinger has a 31 yard penalty. So here comes the Seahawks with a little momentum on offense. They'll throw it. Gonna loft it near side. Incomplete. Boy, Tyler Lockett had it for a moment, but he couldn't hang on. Brandon Williams tried to help knock it out. Well, playing defensive backs all about finishing. Watch Brandon Williams. He finishes, and then his buddy Harlan Miller, who I know nothing about, <laughs> comes over and finishes it coming from the middle of the field. Harlan Miller not expected to play. He's getting his opportunity. Just made a real big play. 
Brandon Williams is an interesting guy, John. He was a running back at Texas A&M. He played corner uh, last year, and so he's he's really still learning the position, but he's getting a chance to kind of audition for next year. Well, the injuries Arizona has second and ten. Wilson has time this time for a near side incomplete, and there's another flag. Paul Richardson, the intended receiver. Talk good about Brandon Williams. I may have got him a flag there. <laughs> Bruce Arians is hot. We call that the Burkhart curse around here. Before <laughs> <laughs> the ball was thrown, holding defense number 26. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. And James Betcher, the defensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals, said this is what the young man's working on. A lot of the nuance of the position. You get your hands outside, they're going to call penalties. You keep them inside in the framework, they'll let you do a little hand fighting. There's James Betcher, the fine defensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals. And so first and ten Seahawks on the move from their own 20. They will run it to Rawls. He tries to sneak his way inside the 20 for a short game. We're talking about the Seahawks run game, John, and and this is what we're talking about here. I mean, look, they've been top four in the league the last few years, if not the best. And this year, they're 20th. And yes, it's getting better. It just doesn't, it hasn't looked like Seattle running the ball like it has in the past. I'll tell you, a lot of it is health. Thomas Rawls missed seven games because of a broken fibula. The other thing, Kevin, Russell Wilson, when he's healthy, yes. he's going to run the ball. The threat's going to be there on the zone read. That hasn't been there because he hasn't been healthy. Second down, get it to Baldwin. Looking for blocks. Doug Baldwin just kind of meanders his way inside the 20 to about the 18. Now Wilson you know, just started running a couple weeks ago. What a threat that was. And he, he brought up the point. He said, you know, I think the biggest part where it impacted us was on third downs. Because he talks about those one or two first downs he, he used to get from running the football that just becomes huge in a game. And he wasn't able to do that. That part of his game. Now credit to him, they're nine and four. He adapted. Credit to him, he never missed a practice, which is simply phenomenal. Third down and eight. Wilson. Pocket collapses and down he goes. It's another sack for Arizona. Second of the game for Marcus Golden. And the Seahawks will try a field goal. This young man could play. Now all of a sudden you got bookends. Here's Marcus Golden. He's going to stun inside. And you got Marcus Golden on one side, Chandler Jones on the other. They just met at the quarterback. You've got trouble for an opposing offense. This defense is a prideful group. They got shredded by Drew Brees. Not the first. They won't be the last. But they were upset with the way they played, and they're showing it coming out playing great. They've already got three sacks in this game. Golden with two of them. Here's a 45 yard try, and it's blocked. It is blocked by Arizona. So the special teams, which have killed Arizona all year long, they've come to play in that department here today. Hauschka trying from 45. Everything looked good, but Arizona with their hands up. I think it was Rodney Gunter. Cardinals in front. Last couple kicks for Steven Hausko against the Cardinals and not gone well. This would have won the game in Arizona from under 25. And then this last one blocked. Is that just a low kick? It's a low kick, no doubt about it. And so it's 7 0 Cardinals here. 31 seconds ago in the first quarter. A little quick hitter. It's Fitzgerald. He looks like he's going to throw it. Gets pressure, throws, and it's short. He was looking for David Johnson. But Michael Bennett didn't fall for it and came in and got some pressure. What a play by Michael Bennett, who's a fantastic player. The sense to understand that Larry Fitzgerald's going to throw it. And watch where Michael Bennett, when you hustle, good things happen. He runs at him. Larry Fitzgerald can't set his feet. But you see the respect people have for Larry Fitzgerald. Such a great player, such a great ambassador for this league. It's interesting because last week against the Orleans, Arizona had all these short passes. It's almost setting that up. So a second and ten. And a timeout is called. John, we had a defensive battle last time these two teams played. There's been 24 total yards in this game so far in the first quarter. I guess we should get used to it. 
But one thing is for sure, and we said this in the open as we welcome you to the booth. You got the feeling talking to Arizona yesterday that they were going to come to play today, and they're they're coming to play for sure. Listen, when you have these deep-seated division rivalries, you've got a lot to play for. And you know, we talked to Steve Kime. The general manager, he said, listen, we're out of the playoffs, but these guys are playing for their roster spots. I'm sitting back saying, who's going to fight? So guys get that message loud and clear. The Seahawks obviously get the message. They win. They got a good chance of playing a playoff game here after a bye. A lot to play for for both teams. Yeah, there is. So both defenses playing well. The only touchdown, if you just tuned in, it was a Marcel Reese fumble. Calais Campbell recovered, and then Arizona went 23 yards for the score by David Johnson. That's been it. Other than that. Not much offensively. Top of Rubin is back in. This should be the end of the quarter. David Johnson going to pick up a couple for Cam Chancellor made the play. I'd imagine that will take us to the end of quarter number one. And that'll do it. One quarter from Century Link Field. A little defense. What did you expect, Seahawks and Cardinals? But it's the Cards with the early lead. You know, take a look at this early trick play. Larry Fitzgerald, watch David Johnson, KJ Wright on his heels. Larry Fitzgerald throws it right now. That's a touchdown. Not a quarterback, not used to doing it, but if he throws on time, that's a touchdown. Nice little wrinkle by Harold Goodwin, the offensive coordinator, Bruce Arians. Wasn't executed properly. And so he starts this second quarter. Arizona's got a third down and eight, and we've got some movement. All start. Offense, number seven. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That's on Evan Bain, backup offensive lineman. At this point, don't know who's a backup and who's not. Arizona's <laughs> used so many offensive linemen. That's the backup to the backup to the backup to the backup. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're going deep. Evan Mathis started the year at right guard. Earl Watford. John Wetzel, who's now the left tackle. Taylor Boggs. Well, they've gone through the fifth. Third and 13. They'll run it to Johnson, sweeping right, and that is not going to get it done. Seattle right there with Bobby Wagner who's had a great year leading the NFL in tackles a fantastic player I think it's interesting what do we know Bruce Arians for he's aggressive he goes for it third and 13 he does know here though third and 13 if you go back and throw it you're playing into the Seattle Seahawks plans he's he's willing to punt he's watching his defense they're dominating the line of scrimmage he's playing to his defense right now almost a punt block that time Seattle got in there with Elliott couldn't make it instead it'll be a fair catch call for by Lockett. Let's see how close Elliott came here. Relatively close. But Wild got it off 42 yard punt no return. Here, here comes Seattle. First quarter total John. There is uh, not a lot of yards going on. There's, 20, <laughs> there's 26 total. Now the only Seattle moved the ball with a couple penalties and Arizona got the fumble and went in from 23 out. That's it. That is it. Some really good defense being played by guys like Calais Campbell right there in the heart of this Arizona defense. And I know you love it. I do. <laughs> so here is Wilson on the keeper, and that doesn't fool anybody. C.O. Moore, who's filling in for the injured Dayon Buchanan, makes a nice play. We've got a game break. Let's check in with Carissa Thompson. Thanks, Kevin. A minute left in the first. Bucks still in the hunt for the NFC South title, and this isn't going to help. Mark Ingram, six yard touchdown right here. Now, the Saints already eliminated from the playoffs because of the wins by the Packers and the Redskins earlier today. They're up 7 nothing in this one. Kevin? Big Washington won a way to pick up their eighth win. So if Tampa loses, not only would they not win the division, but they'd have to fight to get in the wild card. Bucks picked off Drew Brees three times the last time they played. Him. You have a feeling he remembers that, John? <laughs> I think so. Second and 14. Four-man pressure. And they're gonna get to Wilson again. The fourth sack of Russell Wilson already today. Jones and Campbell converged. Calais Campbell, Chandler Jones, great push up the middle. Russell Wilson has made a habit out of making things happen late against this defense, the way they're playing right now. Ball has to be gone right now because they're also very aware of containing 
Russell Wilson. Someone's waiting for him every time he tries to escape. Great defense being played by these Cardinals. Seattle's offensive line is getting buried right now. Third and 21. They go four man rush and there's still pressure. Marcus Golden wants a holding call and he's going to get it. It looked like Golden got held on that play. He was begging for the call and I think he got it. And they're very well disciplined. He was waiting. He got help. It's the only reason he didn't get to the outside of Russell Wilson. This one will come back. Wow. <laughs> this is some performance by Arizona's defense to start. There it is right there. Holding on to those pads. See, motioning for the flag right there as he's being held. Holding. Offense number 79. That penalty has been declined. He's all the play is fourth down. So Seattle offensively with a smattering of boos here at home. And you never hear that here. And Arizona's defense has dominated in the early going. Look at those numbers. It's getting hit every single time. Wilson has no shot. Listen, I, you know, Pete Carroll talks about this offensive line. He thinks they're going to be have a bright future. They need them right now. And right now, they aren't playing well enough. Ryan will punt away. Good high kick, fair catch by Peterson and Arizona's defense. The story so far. They've got the turnover. They're holding the Seattle to negative four yards. And they've got the 7 0 lead. Small screen, stadium size content. Watch live local Sunday games on your smartphone, NFL Mobile. This just happened during the break, and it was a pretty impassioned little speech. Yeah, Jermaine Kerr started it. Doug Baldwin in there barking at the offense. They know they've got to get this right, not only for this game, heading on into the playoffs. Harry Fitzgerald makes the catch and dives forward out to the 39. He's got three yards. Cam Chancellor is not in the game right now. They're looking at his foot. As Pam Oliver tells us from the Seattle sideline. So there he is. You know that Earl Thomas is out for the year. So you got Steven Terrell out there. Wow, that would be devastating. We'll see what happens. There's Jerron Johnson. That would be absolutely devastating to this defense. Camp Chancellor and Earl Thomas so important, so vital to what they do. We've got Terrell who's been playing for Earl Thomas, and now it's Johnson. Just signed recently, a longtime Seahawk before that, knows the system. Here's Ponder. He's got a lot of time. Stand again, lofting for Gresham, and he caught it. Somehow got it. Breaks a tackle, and inside the 30, Deshaun Shedd was all over him, but somehow he came up with it, and a big gain of 34. There's great time here. They've been running the football, so they go to the play action. They max pro. I'm thinking, Carson, you just missed an opportunity underthrown. Huh. The concentration by Gresham. Shed, you got to turn your head and locate the football. Gresham sees it in. Big play for the Cardinals. It's quite the development early going. Game of Seattle certainly needs to try and lock up a first round playoff by. Arizona's been eliminated, but they're not playing like it. And here comes the defense. Michael Bennett. With the stop of Johnson, boy, is he good for those? A few of those a week or what? Game wrecker, disruptor, whatever you want to call it, he's that guy. Michael Bennett, so fun to watch. Take a look at him up top. Going to come underneath Evan Beim, get in the backfield, and then finish it. He's a really unique player, a really unique individual. Become the leader of this defense in many ways. Evan Bain has been playing right guard instead of Taylor Boggs. There's Ponder pressure, just going to get it off. Oh, look out. KJ Wright trying to get Johnson, but now he has help from his friends. And David Johnson, nowhere to go. Just swarming defense by Seattle that time. KJ Wright, I think one of the smarter linebackers in football. There's a lot of plays he doesn't necessarily make, but he sets up for the rest of this defense. Bobby Wagner, a huge beneficiary of KJ Wright's smarts. These guys are smart players. They play a simple defense, do the same thing over and over, but they do it extremely well.
Arizona needs to get to the 17 on third down. Here's Johnson the flat. Here comes Sherman. What a tackle. Nowhere near a first down, but certainly in field goal range, and that's what Bruce Arians will try. The big thing with a, a field goal in this matchup, they haven't been working too good. You know, the 6 6 tie, they each took their turns missing field goals. Now we got a little. Ooh, and a flag, multiple little flags, a little skirmish. Looks like Frank Clark and Gresham were going at it. Honestly, I didn't see the beginning of it, John. It was... well, he's hot. If you're Gresham, you may have just taken your team out of field goal yeah. range. So now, Ron Torbert and his crew will have to sort this out. Let's see if we could spot the beginning here. So Larry Fitzgerald helping Gresham up. And then here we go. You can't take your helmet off in the middle of the field. That's one thing. After the play was over, Conning, offense, number 84. It's a 15 yard penalty. The down counts. It's fourth down. Just took it. Number 84's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul for potential disqualification. Uh, you're right, John. He just took him out of field goal range. And of course, if you get one more of those, you're ejected from the game. Well, I don't. We didn't see what happened on the play for him to have that kind of reaction, but you can't do it. Look, I have a lot of respect for Gresham. He's been playing incredibly hard. That's selfish, though. You just took your team because of your emotions. You have to be able to handle your emotions, especially in these division rivalries. There's going to be personal feelings. You can't make it personal, though. Seattle gets a break, and Wild will punt away. Short punts. But does the job. It's inside the 20. Lockett calls fair catch. See if the Seattle defense could get going. They've been shut down. 7 0 Cardinals in the second. You take a look at Jermaine Gresham and Frank Clark. This was the play before the ensuing penalty. Then the next play, you fast forward. A little barking going on. We'll show you the next play in a second, and you'll understand why Jermaine Gresham was upset. Yeah. They showed John in his back, and wait till you see how he got there. That's why he was so hot. So Seattle, though, gets the benefit of the doubt with that, and they take over his Baldwin. And Doug Baldwin has the grab, and he's out near a first down, maybe just a hair short. Here's the play. Now watch Jermaine Gresham, and watch. This is just a cheap shot, a bush league play by Jeremy Lane. He goes and jacks up Gresham, but Gresham, you didn't get the penalty. Leave it at that, and you you make up for it. You want to get. Jeremy Lane get him when the game starts again in between the whistles instead you caused yourself you got your team out of field goal range. You can certainly see why he was hot though. Here's Rawls and a first down for the Seahawks who had negative four yards on offense finally moved the change without a penalty. And listen now you you can feel this stadium it's come alive and so. You know, maybe you're up 10 nothing if you hit that penalty. Instead, it's 7 nothing. You got a little momentum going for the Seattle Seahawks. And listen, they aren't going anywhere in the playoffs. You're playing for pride, but you also have to play smart. You have to play poised. They see the total yards. It's been a defensive battle as we expected, as it was the first time these two teams met. Here is Rawls trying to leak through that left side. It's going to be a yard and a half, not much, as Calais Campbell is up to the task. Calais Campbell, interesting. He's going to be a free agent after the year, and he has been a good Cardinal. But it's going to be uh, it's going to be questionable what you do for a 30-year-old who's had good production, not amazing production, but good production. Yeah, I think next season will be 31. There's games where he's unblockable. It doesn't happen consistently enough, maybe. But guys like that get paid, so someone will pay him. It's just a matter: is that going to be the Arizona Cardinals? And they've got him. They've got Chandler Jones. They've got Tony Jefferson. They've got some big free agents on the defensive side of the ball. Wilson almost fumbled, skirts away, fires complete. Good play from Russell Wilson. Could have been a disaster. Instead, hooks up with Doug Baldwin for a first down. Well, and that's what Russell Wilson has always had the ability to do: improvise and make great things happen. But I tell you. We've seen a number of mistakes on simple fundamental things. The Marcel Reese fumble. They're loose with the football right now. They make this play, but they got to tighten up as an offense. So a couple of first downs by Seattle trying to get a little momentum on the offense for the first time all game long. Four man rush. Far side is Baldwin again. So getting Baldwin involved 
And he's making a difference out across the 45. It's a gain of four to Baldwin. I tell you, an excellent job by offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel on this series. He knows they're getting dominated up front. His quarterbacks get killed. So what have we seen? A lot of three-step throws. Get the ball out of his hands. Try to create some rhythm, almost an extension of the run game with the quick throws to Doug Baldwin. They'll run it on second down with Rawls. And boy, he is fighting for every single yard. Yard and a half will give him two. He's got seven carries for eight yards. That's it. DJ Swearinger's really gone into the role. Typically, we see him back as a free safety. He's moved into the role of Tony Jefferson. It's one thing these Arizona Cardinals do. They live in your backfield. They lead the league in tackles for losses. So, not uncommon. It's usually Tony Jefferson doing it, but DJ Swearinger filling in for his buddy. John, this is the 11th third down in the game total. It's only the second one that's not third and long. It's a third and four. It's only a three man rush. Gets rid of it and a drop by Rawls. Maybe he sensed he was about to get belted, but it's incomplete or promising drive in Seattle will punt. Russell's not sharp right now. You see a three man rush, the top quarterbacks in this league, what do they do? They extend, they make things, they let it develop. Right there, the quick throw by Russell. With eight guys dropping, even if you get the catch, there's going to be a swarm of people there. Russell Wilson not on his game. So seven nothing Arizona. 5:29 to go in this first half from Seattle on this Christmas Eve. A chilly day, no rain though in the Pacific Northwest. Ryan will punt it away. High punt, and the third time Patrick Peterson has called a fair catch here today. Good punting from John Ryan. So Arizona, a long way to go, but. They're pitching the shutout right now. Arizona begins this drive on their own nine. Seven nothing. They're in front. Defensive football game in Seattle. Here's Jones. Stutters. Gets a hole. Makes a spin. And working his way out to the 19. Big injury in this game. And that guy's not on the field. Pam Oliver, want to tell us why? Yeah, Kevin Cam Chancellor. He's just one of those heart and souls of the Seahawks defense. He spent an eternity on the trainer's table getting that left ankle worked on. It took a while to get the upper part of the ankle taped and padded just right. Chancellor was listed as questionable. He tried to jog a little bit, but as you see, he can't move and he's not going to play. And they're taking him into the locker room as we speak. Back here. That is huge news, especially with Earl Thomas already out for the year. Here comes Arizona, second and short, and that'll move the chains. I mean, John, I, you know, they're they're making it work without Earl Thomas. Maybe not the same playmaking ability, but Terrell's been been fine back there. But I don't know if Seattle can function without both those guys. Yeah, you said they're making it work. It is not the same without Earl Thomas. You take both those guys out. That's the communication. Look, right now, I love what Bruce Arians staying patient. But believe me, there's going to be a point that Bruce Aaron says, both safeties out, we're going after these guys down the field. And so we'll keep you updated. Thanks, Pam, for that. And let's see what happens with Chancellor here. First and 10, Arizona. Palma steps up. There's your call. Firing deep for Nelson. He's got it. J.J. Nelson gone. I think Bruce Arian said about now is that time both safeties out we got to take it downfield they had set him up with the run 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 and watch Terrell the safety kind of hangs in the middle you better be deep as the deepest that guy runs four two eight so you better get deeper and J.J. Nelson just outruns Deshaun Shed and Stephen Terrell and Carson Palmer what a pretty Pretty throw for the deep touchdown. Boy, did you call that? Nelson's got seven touchdowns his last eight games. He's really coming on. Extra point by Kevin Zero. It is good. Stunned crowd here at Central League Field in Seattle. An 80 yard bomb to J.J. Nelson, and it's 14 0 Arizona. So you're the Seattle Seahawks defense. This is usually your all pro, Earl Thomas. They run that, the double post. Right now, he needs to be back. Carson Palmer sees him not back in the middle of the field. Deshaun Shedd says, give me some help. Or Jeremy Lane, excuse me. Stephen Terrell not there. 
It's a great call by Bruce Arians, Harold Goodwin, seeing both safeties out for the Seahawks and taking advantage of it. Uh, this is stunning here today. Not that the defense have both played well, but 14 0 and Seattle's done zip on offense in a game that is prideful for Arizona, but Seattle trying to get a home playoff game and a bye. If they win the last two games, either they do it. They've got a big hole here. Obviously, plenty of time to go. And Steve Kine, the general manager, talked to us on the field. And he said, I'm going to find a lot of, about today who wants to be on this roster because when you're playing here in Seattle, I'll tell me all I need to know. Well, they challenged their guys. They, you know, James Betcher, their defensive coordinator, talked about this will reveal a lot about our character. This is where teams, organizations sit back, and when you're out of it, they say, who's going to come to play? Those are the guys we want going forward. Doesn't seem like they're playing for much. They're playing for pride, but they're also playing for their future. Right now, they're playing really well. Sure are. They've held the Seahawks to 27 total yards with 3.53 to go on the half. Here is the zone read, and Wilson turns on the Jets and sliding safely at the 40 is Russell Wilson. It's a run of 15. Boy, is out of sight for sure eyes for Seattle. Uh, you know what that does? That opens it up for Thomas Rawls later. He's reading right here. He sees Morrill. That's the read part of the zone read. He's got his gap. Good job by Jimmy Graham blocking Swearinger. And Russell Wilson healthy once again. He's not 100%, but he's closer to it. That bodes well for the Seahawks. There's Wilson. Steps up. Firing deep. He's got a man wide open, and it's complete. It's Doug Baldwin. And a big play for Seattle as it beat Brandon Williams on the coverage. And mark it down at the 29. It's a gain of 31. Russell Wilson always has a sense for when his team needs him. Doug Baldwin, he beats Brandon Williams at the line of scrimmage with that release. Russell Wilson drops a dime in there for Doug Baldwin. Little momentum for the Seattle Seahawks. Baldwin's. Had a nice half, four catches, 54 yards, and a first down inside the 30. Fake the run, pressure, Wilson locking it up for the end zone! Touchdown! It's Lockett! And he's hurt. Concern with Tyler Lockett down. But watch Tyler Lockett again winning at the line of scrimmage. What a release. Brandon Williams. You're going to learn you got to win at the line of scrimmage with your hands. Let's see. A yeah, one hand catch by Lockett with the left hand. Oh boy, John, this doesn't look good. I'm just judging by Doug Baldwin's reaction, who just oh, came gosh. away. And, uh, oh, it's gosh. not good. Let's not look at that again. It is not good. And, you know, this team has struggled with health all year long. Russell Wilson has struggled with health. Lockett's come on of late because he's been healthy. He had a knee injury in week two. He's such a big part of this offense of late. He just gets oh. landed on on that right. Ankle. That's a tremendous catch. And unfortunately, it looks, I don't want to speculate, but it looks like Tyler Lockett's right leg is not going to be in good shape. Oh, man. Just hate to see that. Doug Baldwin next to him. Be there for some emotional support. Uh, John, moments ago before this, Baldwin, you see the officials are instructed to clear people away, but moments before, Baldwin came out screaming, emotional, because he knew he was seriously hurt, and now just trying to lend some support for Lockett. Goodness, we met with him Friday, and he's such a great kid, just excited about the way he's playing. He was so excited about being a bigger part of this offense, mm -hmm. about their prospects moving forward. That's a unfortunate reality of this business. Well, they work on Tyler Lockett, who's obviously got a serious injury. Seahawks on the board. That is what is down with the ball at the half yard line. It'll be Seattle's ball 
first and goal on the half yard line. The clock will start on my ready for play signal. Well, you see Lockett being taken off. And we find out from Ron Torbert that that wasn't even a touchdown. He's down at the half yard line as Lockett raising his hands to the Seattle crowd. Well, that's just tough for this Seahawk team. They've already lost Cam Chancellor. We don't know the extent of that ankle injury that Pam told us he was going to work on in the locker room. And now clearly Lockett's got a serious injury. You know, Kevin, you know, the. There was so much excitement in their building the other day because they felt like they were getting healthy at the right time. So tough loss, but they'll have to move forward without a vital cog on that offense. Really explosive player. We'll see what he was down. They mark it at the right there, left knee down. The ball's not in. Good, good That's catch. A good call. Right. Uh, the right knee's down right there. I think so. Ball too. not in. So. First and goal. Seattle will try and get on the board one more time. Rawls and is he in? Waiting for a signal. No, he is not in. Time ticking down near the two-minute warning. Outstanding fight by Rawls. Second effort trying to get in there. Looked like he was going to get in there on second effort, but they just smother him. CO Moore in there holding on your life down. We for the two minute warning. Seahawks trying to get on the board. We come back at 7 0, Arizona, 14 0, Arizona. Seattle trying to get on the board. They thought they had it a moment ago. Tyler Lockett, they ruled him down at the one and went off with a leg injury and looked like a, a rough one, certainly carted off the field. Now Seattle trying to regroup and get in and get on the scoreboard. Second and goal. Signal Russell Wilson's not going to get there. And now a third and goal coming up as Corey Peters pushed the pile for Arizona. Uh, they're playing hard, the Arizona Cardinals. That's a good call by the officials. The ball never breaks the plane. Russell Wilson, that's dangerous putting the ball out there. He does have two hands on it, but they just don't get that push. Again, Arizona winning the line of scrimmage. All you need to do is for one little tip of that football to hit the one little edge of the goal line, but he didn't get there. Now, does Richard Sherman call this play? <laughs> I don't know if he calls the play, but I don't know what's <laughs> happening if they don't get in. They're going to try and throw it. Pressure, Wilson spins. He's in deep trouble. Lofts it incomplete. And this Arizona defense with a stand. As Booz cascade down here in Seattle. Calais Campbell wants the intentional grounding. See, they're looking for Baldwin out there to the flat. Wasn't there. Russell Wilson still in the pocket. Guess what? They're going. Seattle has the offense, and now Russell Wilson's going to call a timeout. There's no grounding, John. He was out of the pocket. And they've had the offense out there on fourth and goal. The Russell Wilson calls a timeout. And now curious if they will indeed go for this. And I'm John, just take me through the emotions now. I mean, you're getting really beat up pretty good in this first half. It looks like you're on the board and you lose one of your key players clearly to a serious injury. There's a lot happening here. Yeah, and that's Pete Carroll. He's a great leader. You got to draw these guys back, your leaders. You've seen Russell Wilson really take charge on this drive. So this is when you need your best players. And Pete Carroll understanding the moment right now sends his offense back out. Listen with Richard Sherman talking about throwing it on third down third on from the one last week. Now we're with the fourth down. So interesting to see there's Richard Sherman to see if they're going to run it with Thomas Rawls and to see if this Arizona defense can stand up once more. Fourth and goal. A fake Wilson is sacked and Arizona with the stand. Rodney Gunter. Wow. Pete Carroll, Daryl Bevel almost to say, we want to throw it, we're going to throw it. 
Well, look what happens. You better establish the line of scrimmage, getting too cute. And Rodney Gutner says, come on down, Russell Wilson. That is the fifth sack of the first half for Arizona. Gunter wasn't fooled for a split second. What a turn of events. So Seattle crowd goes nuts. They think they get on the board. Not only do they not score, Lockett goes out with a serious looking injury. And then on four tries from one, they can't get in. And I just knew they were running Thomas Rawls right there. They did not. They chose to get cued again, and it bit them. 111 to go in the half. Arizona football with two timeouts to go on their own eight. Here's Johnson sprinting to the outside. A little stiff arm, but Shed is able to take him down. The Seattle corners, including Shed and Richard Sherman, are such great tacklers. Typically, you see David Johnson. Once he gets the perimeter, he's he's gone. Shed is a former safety. Really has had a nice year for the Seattle Seahawks. And his defense, even without Cam Chancellor, is doing a whale of a job. Johnson's 14 carries, 35 yards. Second down, they're going to run it again. Oh, and it's a fumble. Who's got it? I think Seattle got it. And they do. KJ Wright came up with it. The fifth fumble this year for Johnson could come at a worse time. I believe it's Cliff Averill who gets in there right away. The penetration. Watch Cliff Averill come around in the stunt. Puts it on David Johnson, but again, it's just a bad exchange between Carson Palmer and David Johnson. KJ Wright comes out with it. What a huge play. So here's Bruce Arians, who loves to bomb it down the field. He's being conservative, just trying to go in with a 14 0 lead. And now, maybe on Christmas Eve, you gift wrap one for Seattle. See the disbelief by David Johnson. What a turn of events in the last couple minutes. 32 seconds to go. First and goal from the nine. Wilson. Going to throw it. End zone. Looking for Baldwin. Incomplete. Justin Bethel was there. And a second and goal. Justin Bethel, a special teams demon, a great special teams player, a captain on this team. His head coach took a a br brutal shot at him a couple weeks ago about his cornerback play. Good for the young man for standing in there and standing tall, going against one of the better receivers in the league and coming up big for the Arizona Cardinals. Thomas Rawls lines up as a wide receiver, top of your screen on this formation. 27 seconds in the half. Blitz. Wilson just going to fire it away. I mean, he was, he had no chance. Just an onslaught by this Arizona. Defense coming. I'm not even going to draw because just sit and watch. They're coming from all angles. Free runners. Russell Wilson can't do anything else but throw it away. You know, I, I don't know what play you call against that. I mean, they are <laughs> five sacks in the first half. He is getting killed going back to throw the ball. And now a third and goal. Wilson. Going ends on far side incomplete. Baldwin raises his hands, wants a flag, not going to get it. Brandon Williams on the coverage. And so seven tries at a goal to go situation, and they can't get in. But you're limited. It's got to be something quick because you can't protect Russell Wilson. So you're limited to a one man route, really. And Brandon Williams, good for him standing up. This time he says, let me back off and see if I have any more luck. Little contact. But the officials let it go, and I think rightly so. So this will be a 27-yard field goal for Stephen Hauschka. Remember, he had the last one blocked from 45 yards out. Just trying to get Seattle on the board. I think I've said that a few times. Snap and hold are good, and that's good. Seahawks break the shutout. 14-3 Arizona. 15 seconds to go in the half. How about this Arizona defense? So seven plays, goal to go situation. Seahawks don't get a yard. It's big, big time football. Don't worry about what's happening on the other side of the ball. And they've got Jimmy Graham frustrated this entire stadium, who's typically right behind their team, 
We've heard some boos, Kevin. They're not happy with this offense. Is Golden? He will take an E, John. I think this is going to be a really interesting half. This is Russell Wilson going back. He hasn't had a good first half, but he has had no chance on most of these. Listen, it's been sound. It's been Wilson. discipline. Pocket it's been pressure from every which way. Four-man pressure. They brought a little blitz. James Spencer doing a great job. The consistent theme. They're hitting Russell Wilson every time he throws it. And so it's 14-3. Each team getting points off of another team's fumble. And then the big play in this one was up top to J.J. Nelson. Carson Palmer right after Cam Chancellor had gone out. Second series he was out. They go 80 yards for a touchdown. That has been the game summary. I'll take a knee and that will do it for half number one in Seattle. Cardinals trying to play spoiler and prevent the Seahawks from getting a home playoff game. Up 14 to 3 right now. Halftime show. Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy coming your way from Los Angeles. We'll take you there right now. A first round game here, but obviously the bye, and then the second round game here is a huge difference. They all talked about it on Friday when we were at the facility. See if they could come back in this one as Richardson is back to receive. And Richardson with a good room. Paul Richardson all the way out near the 35. Let's go down the sidelines with Pam Oliver. Hey there, Kevin. My first question for Pete Carroll was about Tyler Lockett. I told him about obviously the concern that so many people have for him. He says so far we think that Tyler Lockett has a broken leg clearly will not return. I asked if he was disheartened by the boos that were rained down on his offense. He said it was completely warranted. We need continuity there. We have to keep fighting and keep some things going. As for Bruce Arians, he was hysterical. I asked him about the defensive dominance that we're seeing. He says we have been dominating their offensive line for three years. Back to you. <laughs> Bruce. Bruce never wanted to pull punches, is he, John? That's Baldwin with the catch on first down. Yeah, but he also speaks the truth, and they have been. And Seattle's got to find a fix for it. The question is, Kevin, with the guys they have, they got a guy who played basketball two years ago playing left tackle for them. Do they have the guys here to go make a push in the playoffs? Didn't look like it in that first half. Alex Collins in the backfield, I believe, for the first time all game. He's going to get a carry. Collins with a good run, making people miss, and across midfield. He was a star of practice on Friday. Maybe he needs the ball a little more. Now they were resting Thomas Rawls in hopes that he would come out fresh, but he looked great. Fresh legs, and you look at Alex Collins. You got a double team from Fent, that basketball player I was talking about, Glowinski. You get a little space, these running backs can do something. Collins actually rushed for a thousand yards three straight years at Arkansas in college. He's going to get a chance. He's got a burst. Look at this Alex Collins, but hang on, there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Holding offense number 74, 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. George Fant, the left tackle. Let's watch him. He's going to be working, I believe, against Calais Campbell. Calais Campbell's just giving their fits. And there you get extended. That's easy. You see a fistful of jersey in George Fant's right arm. Calais Campbell just wreaking havoc, making it tough for this Seattle offensive line who's struggling mightily. And so a first and 20 after the penalty. Four man rush. Wilson throws far side. And he's got a completion. Baldwin again. Been his favorite target. Got a couple more injuries to tell you about. Pam Oliver, you've been busy today. Yeah, Kevin. The reason we're not seeing Thomas Rawls at this at this time, I, the team just told me that he has a shoulder injury and he's questionable. Meantime, Cam Chancellor, he continues to be questionable as well with an ankle. Back to you. Man, that's Rawls holding that shoulder as Pam just told you. I mean, Seahawks had a healthy week for the most part. I mean, they barely listed anybody on the practice in the injury report, but now it has not been a good game there for them. Wilson has a lot of time, most all game, and he uses it to find Baldwin, who's out to the 41. He'll be two yards shy of a first down. Watch Doug Baldwin look, working in the slot. Well, zone coverage. He's going to find that open window. He's got the time. You can get to that second window when you have time as a quarterback. Russell Wilson poised. 
It stuck Baldwin low and away, but the time set that up. We're talking about the injuries, all the ones for Seattle. Keep in mind, Tony Jefferson, the safety got hurt early on in this one, so Harlan Miller is back there, been playing safety for Arizona. Here's Collins in the flat. Good move and a first down. So Alex Collins playing because of the injury to Rawls has given Seattle some life here in the third quarter. I don't know what Patrick Peterson was doing right there. They motion Alex Collins out, and he's just disregarding him, almost daring him to throw. And Russell says, You dare me, I'll throw it there. He only needs a yard. So Patrick Peterson, I think, trying to play coy, but he got a taste of Russell Wilson's medicine. Just a fourth reception of the year for Collins. Marcel Reese in the game. Fake it to him. Wilson has time. Throw all oh, knocked away and nearly intercepted by Justin Bethel. Maybe Bruce Arians should call him out more often. He's playing a great game. <laughs> He's a great special teams player. He's a captain of this team. Talking to some of the Arizona players, they didn't like that their coach, the way he called him out. He was asked, is he a work in progress at cornerback? He said, not a work in progress, a failure in progress. Mm. Harsh words. Sometimes coaches are trying to get to a whole team, trying to get under their skin a little bit. Bruce Arians not afraid to do it. He's getting a nice response from Justin Bethel. You say it's works. On second down, he'll throw it. Wilson rolled in from trouble and firing deep. He's got Baldwin knocked away. Great recovery on the play, and there's Bethel again. As a quarterback in this league, a key quality, something you have to have, you can't panic. A lot of cornerbacks do. They would have grabbed Doug Baldwin. He's beat. His eyes are in the backfield. But watch the poise. Look and lean, find the ball, and make the play. That's exactly what Justin Bethel did. That's a fine play. So Bethel playing with the injuries. He's got three balls batted down today. Marcus Cooper out. Matthew put an IR. Jefferson out. Guys are doing a nice job. Third down. Wilson firing complete. It's Richardson who makes the catch and a move. So with the injury to Lockett, we saw Richardson on the kick return and now the conversion on third down. Richardson's a burner, and when you have speed, it's not just about going deep. They have to respect that speed. He gets him out of his pedal. Good throw by Russell Wilson. That speed pays dividends, backing Brandon Williams off. So the Seahawks, the best drive of the day. It's the ninth play of the drive, essentially with a new running back and a new secondary receiver with the injuries. Collins. Alex Collins looks good. I know it's only a few carries, but he, he's given him a little something here in this third quarter. It's fresh legs. I mean, one thing about this league, it's a grind. It is a marathon. When you get a guy with fresh legs, he looked different than everybody else mm -hmm. at practice. They were trying to freshen up Thomas Rawls, and we kept saying, wow, he's the MVP of practice. Pete said, no, nah, he's just he's taking some reps off Thomas Rawls. Well, maybe not. <laughs> He'll be taking a lot more reps. Lewis Campbell just went out of the game. Second and six. They'll run it again. Collins straight through. First down. Alex Collins had 42 rushing yards coming into today. He'd been on and off the roster. It, he's had quite the drive. In the threat of Russell Wilson running, holds Okafer. So the zone reads not just for when you give it, it creates big seams. So the threat of Russell Wilson being healthy creates that huge gap where all you see is a Seahawk dressed like Santa. <laughs> First and goal from the eight. Collins three carries, 23 yards. This time the zone read. Wilson, the keeper, and the move, but he slides down inside the five. Second and goal. Keep in mind, the Seahawks have been here before. At the end of the first half, they had seven plays with a goal to go situation. They didn't get a yard. Settled for a field goal on the eighth play. Now a second and goal. This Arizona defense has been up to the task. I see some tired players out there. A lot of hands on hips. They got to get fresh again and come and dominate that line of scrimmage like they have been all day. Collins gets it left side. And he's going to get to the two. Hate to be a play caller, John. <laughs> It feels like this is repeat city for Seattle. Where Pete Carroll, I might call Richard, uh, Richard Sherman, and say, Richard, what would you do? 
<laughs> Listen, I think, I love we, I think we know what he, what he wants yeah, to do. He, was, he did not back down. I love Richard Sherman. Great player, great teammate, great guy, really. I think he was out of line by questioning Daryl Bevel. They go in the shotgun on a third and goal. And they'll throw it. Wilson throwing a fade in the corner. What a catch! It's Coast touchdown! Check to see if he caught it. So catch. Left foot down. Left hip down. Let's see if he holds it through the process of going to the ground. He does. That's a touchdown, folks. The local boy, Jermaine Curse, went to high school here, went to college here. He's been so clutch for the Seahawks over the years, and he lifts them when they need it. That's just his first touchdown of the year. Uh, Seahawks needed some life and they got it on that opening drive and from some of the backups because of the injury really came to play 13 plays 66 yards couple third down conversions including that on the fade to Jermaine curse and Seattle's back in this game extra points by Hauschka. Low snap and put down by Ryan kick is up and good. So Seattle comes out firing out of the locker room and they're back in this game. A touchdown drive of 66 yards and Curse with the touchdown is now 14-10 Arizona. Back at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. We're talking about Richard Sherman. He comes over to say well done Jermaine Curse. First touchdown of the year. Seahawks are back in this game. You know what he said just like I've been saying throw it on third down. <laughs> down here in the goal line. Well it worked that time. There's Daryl Bevel. Pete Carroll was defending his guy. Daryl Bevel is a heck of a defense or offensive coordinator, is what he told us the other day. Richard Sherman, he's a live wire. That's what you get uh -huh. when you get a competitive guy like that. They're a great team. And so taking an E, and Arizona will start on the 25. Well, here at CenturyLink Field, John, the Seahawks are just different. They're different than anybody else. Since 2012, they're 38 and 5. Now, two of those losses have been against the Cardinals. But I mean, on the road, they've been good too. That's good. Above 500 on the road, not nearly as dominant as at home. And in the postseason, why is it important? They're 4 0 here. They're 2 and 2 away from here. Points a game, 28 at home. Almost 15 on the road. So major, major differences. And yeah, they're going to get a home game because they won the division. But getting a bye and getting a home game and one win gets you to the championship game, it's a big deal. Carson Palmer has won two of those games against Arizona. Cam Chancellor back in the game for Seattle, number 31. That's big news for them. Here's Johnson. They're going to run it, makes a couple of cuts. And after a two yard gain, gets slammed by Jaron Reed, a rookie. You talk about that home dominance. I think it's a couple things. Number one, these are the best fans in football. I played college football up here against the Washington Huskies. You get apples thrown at you. They were loud. They never sat down. Kevin, you said it the other day to Pete Carroll. Other places, they're loud. Here, they never sit. It's not just on third down. They're always up. They're always into it. Outstanding fans. The players feed off that energy. And so that's what's at stake here today. Second down pressure. Palmer throws intercepted. It is picked up by Jerry Lane. Hang on, there's a flag on the play. Lane going backwards. But let's look at the penalty. Temporarily, Seattle's football. But I don't think it's going to stay that way. Yeah, I think Jer Jeremy Lane ran right through John Brown in the route to the ball. Defensive pass interference. Pass interference. Defense number 20. We'll take a look. That's what the official saw. Let's see what we see. He does have his hand all over him. And you say, well, then it should be called holding. Well, if the ball's thrown, then it becomes defensive pass interference. Mm -hmm. So that negates an interception, and it gives Arizona a first down up at the 40 yard line. You know, this is an anomaly, John. Talking about the Seahawks playing at home. Coming into today, they had trailed for just over 31 minutes all year. Trail for over 29 minutes already today. Just doesn't happen much. Palmer steps away from pressure, fires over the middle. It's complete inside the Seattle 40. Britton Golden has made the catch. 
That's a gain of 22. Listen. Going forward, Carson Palmer in his 13th year. A lot of people think maybe he's done. I say watch this throw. There's few people in the world that make that throw. That's 25 yards down the field on a line. That's a huge big time throw by Carson Palmer. Looks like Terry Bradshaw in there. And against Richard Sherman, nonetheless. Arizona trying to answer Seattle's touchdown drive. Johnson. And staying with it to the 35. That is Johnson's 17th carry for just 38 yards. But Bruce Arians told us yesterday, he said, look, when we've won here, got to run it 30 to 40 times. Yeah, you can't just let these guys pin pin their ears back and rush. And I love, I love this is Larry Fitzgerald leading the league in receptions. He's in there playing like a tight end. Blocking <laughs> Cam Chancellor. They watch him push the pile. That's why everybody respects Larry Fitzgerald. He does things that are uncommon. If you're leading the league in receptions, are you expected to be basically a fullback? Larry Fitzgerald says, give it all to me. I want it. Johnson lined up as a wide receiver this time. Palmer, though, looking the other way, and that is nearly intercepted. He's trying to get it to Gresham. But he had right there, you had Chancellor in the area, and it's third down. The Seattle Seahawks, the scheme that they play. A lot of people think it's man to man because you see all this tight coverage. It's a zone concept, but there's no easy throws. Sometimes in zone, there's easy, easy throws. The length of them, they play the same thing over and over, so you become very polished. You know how people try to attack you. It's a tough defense to crack. Arizona one of five on third. Here comes the blitz. Palmer hit as he throws. Incomplete. Cliff Averill came in and wreaked some havoc. And a fourth down. Cliff Averill made his first Pro Bowl his ninth year in, and it's because of play like this. Watch him. He's one of the great speed rushers in football. He has the ability to turn the edge. He hits that right arm of Carson Palmer. Kevin, a lot of happy faces at the Seahawks facility because they were so happy for Cliff Averill, his first Pro Bowl in nine years. Chandler Canzero has got plenty of leg. He had a 60 yarder this year, but he's missed six kicks this season. 53 yard try. Snap and hold are good. The kick is no good. Short. And the special teams nightmares continue for Arizona. Little grunge music here up in Seattle. Pete Carroll's team avoids extra points. They still trail by four. Little discussion with Pete Carroll and Jaron Reed, defensive tackle. 14 10 Arizona. Good football game, a lot of defense in this, a lot of injuries too. Seattle scored a touchdown their opening drive in this half. They got it again. And they're on 43. They'll throw. Wilson has a completion over there, and it's good for Doug Baldwin, who's been very active. That's good for eight yards for Baldwin. Ooh. It hits the ground. Does he have control? That's the interesting question. Russell Wilson tries to get up there quick, but here comes the challenge flag. Bruce Arians is going to take a look at this. Why don't we do it as well? Let's see. The ball can't touch the ground. It's a matter right there. Do you have control? I don't think he controls that. I'm with you. They will review the play under review from Bruce Arians. We'll take a break. Back to Seattle in a moment. Hey, you got to start him young, John. Uh, this looks pretty obvious to both of us, doesn't it? Yeah, this angle it becomes After really review, clear. The ruling on the field has changed. The runner pinned the ball against the ground. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be Seattle's ball, second down and seven on the 43 yard line. Please put five minutes and 47 seconds on the game. So, as Mike Pereira told us from LA, you know, you said it, the ball can hit the ground, but you can't use the ground to help make the catch. That's what Baldwin tried to do. Mike there. trained these guys well because that's like the same language that Mike used with us uh -huh. there in the half. And Ron Torbert, coming from Mike Pereira, having as good a year as any official, any referee in football. More importantly, we had this crew last week in Chicago when it was negative four, and he was able to function with his mouth and voice the entire game. <laughs> Not easy. All right. Punch a good goal, goal post. That's true. Second and ten, Seattle after the incompletion. <laughs> Fourth 
four man rush. Wilson coming near side. It's Baldwin again. Doug Baldwin tackled quickly. Ball is loose. It's on the ground. Still loose. Arizona says they've got it. But hold on. The official comes in and says the knee was down. Let's look. Really good job by Patrick Peterson. You see the knee down, but Patrick Peterson securing the tackle. Oh, I don't know. Ball starting to come out there. But they already ruled it down. Forward progress has been stopped, so that's it. There is no more looking at that. Bottom line, third and eight. Doug Baldwin, seven catches, 74 yards now. Jimmy Graham isolated. Wilson steps away. Five. Baldwin, great catch. It was behind him, but he adjusted against Patrick Peterson, and he moves the chains with a gain of 11. Doug Baldwin's an excellent football player. This is not a great throw behind him, but Doug Baldwin concentrates, brings it in against one of the best cornerbacks in football. Really nice play by a really good player. Doug Baldwin's got 87 catches. That's a career high for him. Wilson pressure throws it anyway, going deep down the field, incomplete. Paul Richardson was jumping for that one. Brandon Williams on the coverage. You know, you've only seen a couple targets for Jimmy Graham today. Now, part of the problem when your offensive line struggles that last third down, I saw him one on one on Swearinger. I'm sure Russell Wilson did, but they have to they have to stay in and block with Jimmy Graham. Look at him. He's got a chip, so that kind of takes him out of the play. So you're wondering why you aren't seeing more of Jimmy Graham because the offensive line struggling so much. Jimmy Graham, such a great receiver, he's having to stay in and block. That's a great call. Just one catch for Graham for six yards. Second and ten. They get it out quickly here to Baldwin again, and he just has nowhere to go. Curse was out there trying to block, but Arizona played it well with Bethel and Swearinger. Another third and long. It's been a constant theme in this game. So Baldwin now at nine catches for 84 yards. Russell Wilson has 16 completions total, so it's been the Doug Baldwin show. And here's where you got to start. Something's changed in the second half. They aren't hitting Russell Wilson every time he throws. So now if you're Arizona, you got to find that again. You got to dominate, win those one on one matchups. And start putting pressure on Russell Wilson. Third down, blitz. Wilson lets it fly deep for Baldwin. Overthrew him, and it's incomplete. He had him, but he just missed him, and he took a shot at the end as well. And I love what happens here. They're keeping the tight end in. Betcher says, You're going to keep the tight end in. I'm going to blitz my safety. And it's Swearinger. So you're going to keep him in. Here comes Swearinger. All right, you want to keep a guy in. I'm going to add one. Now you get the hit on Russell Wilson, and even the best, that affects the accuracy. You know, I said shot. It was more like a like a love tap at the very end. Swearinger <laughs> knew that he would get flagged if he followed through. But a lot of passing, and oh, well, there's a block from Arizona. Okafor got it, and it is loose. It is picked up by the Cardinals at the 38. And so the block punt from Alex Okafor. You see him working against Brandon Williams. Special teams have been awful for the Arizona Cardinals until today. They're winning the special teams battle. They are, and they take over in good field position with the lead here at Century League Field. You get a couple of division rivals that don't like each other. They both have great defenses. That's what we've seen here today. It's been a good football game, one that's important to Seattle. They've already won the division, they're in the playoffs. Well, they're playing for a first round bye. And Arizona trying to make sure that doesn't happen. And they'll throw it with Palmer to Kruger Williams, who checks into the game. And he makes a catch. And Williams going to pick up six on that play. We've been seeing more of multiple Arizona halfbacks. Last week, there were a lot of three halfback looks with Kerwin Williams, Andre Ellington, and David Johnson. Remember, they lost Michael Floyd, and Bruce Arian said, We're just trying to get our speed on the field. They got some versatile backs and they're using them. I mean, how about the job Seattle's done on David Johnson? Johnson, remember, has 100 scrimmage yards the first 14 games of this year. It's never been done. He's got 37 total yards so far. And that's with 18 touches. Give it to him again. Jump cut. 
and moves out near the first down. We'll see where the measurement is. We've got an important game break to get to with Kurt Menefee. Yeah, this has been a special season for the Raiders, but it could be taking an ugly turn here. Trent Cole of the Colts sacks quarterback Derek Carr. He lays on the ground for a while, grabbing his ankle. Had to be helped off, couldn't put any weight on it. Matt McGloin in at quarterback, and right now, that's the only sack the Raiders have given up all day. But boy, it could be a costly. Kevin, John? Oh, man. All right, so here's a team that's fighting for maybe even a, a, the number one overall seed. That's an MVP candidate if they call. Thanks, Kurt. First and ten, Arizona. On the fake. Palmer moves away from pressure. And fires complete on the far side of the field. It is John Brown who makes the catch. A tough year. It always starts with protection. And look, the run hasn't been effective, but you do a little play action. Look at Gresham battling. And then here comes David Johnson on Michael Bennett. That gives Carson enough time. And I'm telling you, folks, he's a big time thrower of the football. Those difficult routes he completes with ease. John Brown, a thousand yards last year. He's dealt with this sickle cell trade all year. It's really hampered his second gear, so to speak, his hamstrings. He doesn't have quite the same impact. But that is a first down there. They'll pitch it to Johnson. Looking for a block or two. And Johnson with a good move. And he's got an Arizona first down. You love the way that David Johnson sets up his blocks, but he gets an outstanding block from his left tackle, John Wetzel. Watch him right here. He's going to come around and watch him on Deshaun Shed, the contained player. Look at David Johnson, though. He, set, he sets that up by faking inside. Then comes outside once Wetzel has Shed hooked. That's a great job setting up your blocks by David Johnson. Arizona on the move. First and 10 from the Seattle 28. A little over a minute to go, third quarter. Palmer fires over the middle. He's got a completion. And it is Gresham who gets gang tackled there. We had that incident in the first half where Gresham got angry after a cheap shot took off his helmet. It was quiet there after that one. You know, interesting, Kevin, I was talking with Tom Moore. I mean, he's been around football forever. He had Edger and James in Indy. I asked him, does David Johnson remind you of him? He said, no, Franco Harris. That's who he reminds me of. And it, it you know, you see the taller back in Franco who could run it, who could also catch it. Tom Moore, just a, a wealth of information. Bruce Arians so wise to bring a guy like that on his staff. Johnson listed at 6'1", 224. Give it to him here. Good move. The outside and Johnson should have a first down. He will for Arizona, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. So the Cardinals with a four-point lead, but on the move here, deep in Seattle territory. Seahawks got back in this one, but Arizona trying to extend their lead. Hold on for a good finish. Anytime, obviously. And there is Johnson. Seattle's done a good job, but they have stuck with the run. 20 carries for 58 yards and a first down. They'll fake the run. Palmer in trouble. Side steps going for Larry Fitzgerald. Did he make the catch? He did. Down at the one. It's an excellent play. And you watch Carson Palmer. You say he's not an athlete. You say he's too old. Watch him work the pocket. Knows he's going to get hit, but just puts up a beautiful pass. And the awareness of Larry Fitzgerald shows like he's running a shallow cross, then turns it up. Contested, but nobody catches a better contested ball than Larry Fitzgerald. Man, that was something. Catch number 100 on the year for Larry Fitzgerald came in leading the league. And here we go. First and goal. Play clock down at one. They'll get it off. They'll run it to Johnson. And he gets swarmed backwards. Arians is out on the field trying to call timeout. And he's like, what's going on here? He is way out on the field. And he better get back to the sidelines. Carson Palmer's telling him exactly that. You see Michael Bennett, he saw exactly what Carson Palmer was doing. Michael Bennett, such a smart player, not just a very talented player, but he's smart. He saw Carson Palmer saying, guys, we got to go. Watching the, the, the uh, play clock, he took off, made a big play. Well, we saw Arizona with a goal on Santa earlier, and now, now Arians does call a timeout. Everybody's mad here and it's, it's Christmas John you're supposed to be happy what's going on. That's what's on the line here a couple of heated arrivals. Well, I'm sure that's what Bruce is asking that official so what are, what are your Christmas plans. I 
think that's exactly what he was asking him. You know, I thought we were going to go to break there, but we'll stay here. Why not say hello? Happy holidays to, holidays to you, John Lynch, and I'm Kevin Burkhart. Pretty big sequence here. I mean, Seattle's offense has had their trouble today. You've got to try to find a way to hold Arizona to three. Yeah, and it would be huge if Carson Palmer, David Johnson, and company can get this ball in the end zone. Arizona showing a lot of fight. Seattle does what they do. They've made their adjustments mm -hmm. despite losing Tyler Lockett. They've stayed with this game. They're in it. This is a huge sequence down here, though. Okay. So after the timeout, it'll be a second and goal. Dan Oliver tells us Pete Carroll wasn't thrilled that his counterpart Bruce Arians was 10 yards out of the <laughs> field there. Well, say have, Seattle has a 12th man here, so we're just trying to make it even, John. Give Arizona the 12th man. <laughs> Translation, I called a timeout. I skipped the other step. What it did is it got this crowd going. Second and goal is coming up. Arizona by four here in the fourth. end zone incomplete and there's a fly. He was looking for Jermaine Gresham. And there is a penalty. Bobby Wagner there on the coverage. And it's Gresham who's going to be working against Bobby Wagner. Tight coverage. Plays through him. I'm not sure. Pass but interference. Defense. Alford in the end zone. Ball will be spotted at the one yard line. Automatic first down. You got him. You're allowed to lay that right hand on. Do you pull and restrict him? That's a judgment call. De defensive pass interference always is. Bobby Wagner not happy. I can understand why. But you could see it going either way. Cardinals bring on an extra lineman. That is Cole Toner as a fullback. First and goal after the penalty. Johnson gets it. Johnson is in. Touchdown. Kevin, they told us they know the formula. The formula is about 30 to 40 runs. Carson Palmer's only thrown 15 times today. They keep running at him. Not huge gains, but enough. And then they punch it in with David Johnson. That is a new Cardinals record for rushing touchdowns in a year with 15. Just keep adding to the accolades. And that was an impressive drive. Nine plays, 61 yards. Here is Canton Zero for the extra point. It's up and it's good. I'll tell you one thing Falcons and Lions are looking at this rooting for the Cardinals. Here is Larry Fitzgerald. What a beauty. And it's Arizona adding to their lead. They've got Seattle in a hole. 21 10 here in the fourth. That's a big drive by the Cardinals. Carson Palmer, four for four on it. And it's 21 10. These Cardinals trying to play spoiler of the Seahawks. Seattle's in the playoffs, job, but they're playing for a first round bye. This would be a huge game to lose. Yeah, Carson Palmer told us, he said, hey, we've done it before. There's nothing like winning up in Seattle. There's Thomas Rawls on the sideline. Seattle not only losing, but losing Tyler Lockett to. Pete Carroll told Pam Oliver looked like a broken leg. Now, it's been a tough day for them. You know, John Sundays make football family this season. Fox NFL celebrating football families of all kinds in incredible ways. The game day brings people together. This is great. Bringing the Maceteers today, their first ever Seahawks game as a family, treating them to just a great experience today here at Central League Field. They got a tour of the stadium in our TV truck. They came up here in the booth and we got a chance to meet them as well. And that was cool. I mean, just great stuff. Beautiful family. Enjoyed that today. Hope they're having a good time. Here's Russell Wilson racing to the outside. And I think Seattle's going to have to see more of that in the last 13 minutes of this game. They're going to have to pull this game out. A seven yard run. Along with Pam Oliver and John Lynch, I'm Kevin Burkhardt here at CenturyLink Field in Seattle.
on this Christmas Eve. John Schneider, the general manager for the Seahawks. Not as good as it gets as a general manager. On second down, they will run it. It's Collins. And he's going to pick up one. We showed you that shot before. Rawls out and now in street clothes with a shoulder injury. So this is Alex Collins' game the rest of the way. And you just wonder, Alex Collins more of a shotgun kind of third down back type of runner. Here you are in another short yardage. Do you trust that offensive line? Do you trust Alex Collins? That's your short back, short distance runner, short yardage runner, Thomas Rawls. He's not in there. Third and two. Wilson has Collins wide open on the flat. I don't know. I don't know. This is close. See where the spot is. It should be right at that line. And he's got a first down. And this is this gets tough when you know you aren't winning the line of scrimmage. You've got to kind of resort, not a trick play, but this is called a roll pass. It's certainly not going straight ahead saying, we're gonna move you. Let's see the spot. And so it's a first down for Seattle. Under 12 minutes to play, they're down 11. And a flag. Ball start. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. So far, south. John, big story in this game, and really all year for Seattle has been the offensive line. Seattle, or Arizona's defensive line, has really come to play, and they have dominated. And, you know, one of the reasons is they're young, and, and, and they don't, they haven't paid for offensive line. But look at the average, the salary, the Seahawks are well below that, only paying just over six million a year for the current offensive line. It's the lowest in the league, and it's not even close. See, the Giants are next, over seven million away. There's a couple of reasons for that. The first and 15. Wilson fires its curse. We have a touchdown earlier. Makes a catch, jumping out to the 39. So Howie Long was talking about this at the half. They've always believed they could take uh, kind of also ran guys, you know. And you talk to John Schneider. He said that's not the case. We just decided to pay other guys, and we weren't going to stretch to pay. Now at one point when they won the Super Bowl. Against the Denver Broncos, they were the highest paid offensive line in football. They chose, they thought they had some aging guys, they chose not to pay them. But I think the problem, you've almost got your quarterback killed this year. He's been hit so much. This is Terrence McGee in the game. This is Russell Wilson going to keep it. And Wilson starting to run a little now across the 45 to the 47. And it's a Seattle first down. And so when the line isn't playing well, you just run away from it, John. <laughs> And part of the problem is he was hurt maybe because of the offensive line getting hit so much but now he is healthy and this does open things up in your offense. It is amazing he's had an ankle injury a knee sprain which we did that game against San Francisco it looked real bad at first and he didn't miss a practice rep all year he said that means something to me pretty incredible chest injury to boot just about getting healthy although he probably won't be 100 percent. Wilson moves away from pressure. Is he going to run it again? Why not? And he'll slide out at the 49 yard line. So, gain of three for Wilson as we hit almost 10 minutes left to go. You know, Kevin, I think part of the thinking also for Tom, or excuse me, if you're Pete Carroll and John Schneider, listen, we've got that guy at quarterback, incredibly mobile. So, maybe you don't need a great offensive line. We also have who they think's the best offensive line coach in football with Tom Cable. He's willing to take young guys and try to mold them together. But like I said, the problem, you almost lost your quarterback in the process. And then the question, can you go into the playoffs when you're not winning the line of scrimmage and have success? We will see. There's Wilson to throw it near side. Bowen's had a big game. And Doug Bowen's got a first down. He is inside the 45. They're going to mark him down to the 42. And Doug Baldwin now with 10 catches. And that'll put him at 93 yards after the nine-yard game. There he goes in motion. Everything's quick because they know they can't protect Russell Wilson down the field. And you better have people where they're supposed to be. An obvious bust in coverage by the Arizona Cardinal defense. And Doug Baldwin, 93 yards, now has back to back 1,000 yard seasons. From the 42, it's Wilson. Steps up, firing deep for a side incomplete. Just missed. Jermaine Curse, it was off the fingertips. 
One of the things that makes a team not going to the playoffs dangerous is they feel like they've got nothing to lose. Even though they're struggling covering these guys down the field, they keep bringing the pressure. Mm -hmm. What's the worst we do? We lose another. You know, we, we get a better draft choice. You know, so they're they're fighting for this game, but they're also they're letting it all hang out right now, bringing pressure from everywhere. Blitz. Wilson sees it on loads. Baldwin again makes the move. Doug Baldwin. saying in football you live by the pressure you can also die by the pressure nobody left if Brandon Williams doesn't make the tackle Doug Baldwin a lot of people said he couldn't run that's why he was an undrafted free agent he just ran away from Brandon Williams I think Doug Baldwin got emotional at the end there a signal for Tyler Lockett you saw how emotional he was when Lockett got hurt what a monster day for Baldwin 11 for 135 and now they'll go for two they're trying to make this a field goal game. <laughs> Going for two. And the throw is caught by a race two point conversion. Throw the fullback out there for the slam. And we've got a three point game in Seattle. Well, the Seahawks are tough at home for a reason. They're 38 and 5 under Russell Wilson, and they're not dead yet. A big touchdown drive and Doug Baldwin, and they're within three. Love the design of this. Doug Baldwin in the backfield just caught a touchdown. You go everything up there. Everybody looks up here. You sneak your fullback. Yeah, they can't throw to a fullback. Russell Wilson says, watch me. Marcel Reese, not your average fullback. He's made a living out of catching the ball really well. Love the design right there. He's made a couple of Pro Bowls out of doing that with the Raiders. Picked him up a few weeks ago and two point conversion. We got a field goal game here in Seattle. Hausko will kick it off. This is Golden. We're going to take a knee and they will start on the 25. So what do we have as far as the playoff picture goes currently. It's tight as you would imagine. Cowboys and Lions play tomorrow night. Falcons won today uh, Monday night. I'm sorry not tomorrow night. I forget it's Saturday John. There's the Giants Packers red hot now with Aaron Rodgers on a four touchdown day. Bucks they're trying to come back in New Orleans. They're down by 10 there and then the Redskins won today. So this is how it stands right now. Seattle trying to stay in that two in that buy zone. If not Atlanta would jump into the Two hole and have a chance for a first round bye. It's about to get loud here in Seattle. Johnson. Sweep. Cuts it up, David. Johnson. Great cut. And Johnson sprinting, trying to get by Terrell. And he's dragged down at the 42. Britton Golden gave him a good block. It was a 33 yard game. We talked to David Johnson this week. His idol, his mentor, the guy he watched was Emmett Smith. This looks like a lot of Emmett Smith to me. The vision, the ability to jump cut, turn it back right there. There's that jump cut that Emmett Smith made a living of. This guy's a special player. And Bruce Arian right now is putting the game in his hands and saying, take. This one home, David. All of a sudden, John, he's got 23 carries for 90 yards. Kerwin Williams gives him a spell in the backfield. On first down, they will throw it, and there is a completion and a big one. There is Nelson sprinting away. J.J. Nelson inside the two. What an answer from Arizona. Two plays, and they've got a first and goal. And, and this is a designed run right here. This is Carson Palmer seeing. You want to load the box? I'll throw it to J.J. Nelson. Designed run. Carson Palmer and J.J. Nelson kind of do that on their own. And that right there is what speed can do for you, folks. 
Look at he got in. Didn't look like it initially. No, he did not. 41 yard gain to Nelson. First and goal. They will run it to Johnson. He's not going to get in. David Johnson, two touchdowns today. John, first player since Randy Moss in 07 with eight multi touchdown games in a year. And look at if you're Seattle, you got to stop them. They've got a little history. That 6 6 game, they stopped David Johnson twice mm -hmm. going in. Bobby Wagner, the big tackle at the end. Can they do it again? So important for him. Seven minutes to go in the game. Arizona up three. Second and goal. Run it again. And Johnson's in for the touchdown. That was some answer. You got to give this Arizona Cardinals offensive line a lot of credit because they've been much maligned. We're talking about Seattle. They've been injured. They get behind Mike Upati, former All Pro left guard. Look at Jermaine Gresham on Michael Bennett. Great push right there, winning the line of scrimmage, and David Johnson plows ahead for the touchdown. Four plays, 75 yards. It took only two minutes and two seconds. Back up to a 10 point Arizona lead. Just when Seattle looked like momentum was coming back there on their side, the Cardinals with a big answer, and they're up 10 with 6.47 to play. Now, take a look at this. That's a big play by J.J. Nelson. You see all that. Eight men in the box. Carson Palmer can do that, or he says we can do that. And then you got speed in space. And Carson Palmer says, I'll take the speed in space. So you set that up by running it and running it and running it. They load the box. Then you give it to your speed, and J.J. Nelson does the rest. J.J. Nelson's second career 100 yard game has got three for 132, including an 80 yard touchdown. It comes a return by Richardson. And dives across the 20. Next Sunday, she's inappropriate and in charge. TV's most outrageous new comedy is coming to Fox. Caitlin Olsen is their guardian, but she's no angel. The Mick premieres next Sunday after football on Fox. So here's the situation. 6.41 to play. Seattle trailing by 10. Carson Palmer has been magnificent today. He's only thrown it 16 times, but he's been on the money. And so Seattle which their offense has played much better in this half. Down 10 with a little over six and a half to play. And with Atlanta winning, they could lose the number two spot today. Wilson. Here's size Baldwin again. Why not? He's been everywhere. It's his 12th catch of the day for Doug Baldwin. You know, a little subtle play right there, Brandon Williams on his finish. Otherwise, Doug Baldwin goes out of bounds by him hitting him back. The clock winds. It's a great play by Brandon Williams, a subtle thing that might go unnoticed. Collins. Deck set the 29. It'll be a third and short. Love that from TJ Swearinger. He saw it, he came and got it. You got to play smart. You can't play scared in this league. That's playing smart and being aggressive by Swearinger. So third down and two coming up for Seattle under six minutes to play. Wilson standing in floats it out of Collins is behind him. He's got to get up and reach forward. Let's see where they put it. We're kind of blocked off up here from the spot. He's short. They're short. He is short. You know Kevin you sit up here and they showed pressure but you see the throw back behind him. Sitting here wondering, where is Jimmy Graham? Where is he in this game plan? He's not involved at all, and he needs to be for this team to have success in the playoffs. Fourth and one, they're going to zone read. They snug it out, then he throws it, and it's incomplete. Arizona all over the zone read. And they take over. What an effort. Russell Wilson, they go to the zone read. It always works for them. CO Moore in space. Playing Dale Buchanan's spot. That's hard to do. Tackle Russell Wilson in space. 
He says, you're not coming outside. And Russell Wilson heaves it up in desperation. What an effort by this Arizona Cardinals defense. Like Bruce Arian says, we've been dominating the Seattle Seahawks and their offensive line for years. Yeah, it's showing. Isn't it ironic that Dan Quinn, the former Seattle defensive coordinator, is probably sitting in Atlanta right now thinking, hmm, my old mates may go down and maybe we're in the number two hole in the driver's seat. Still time. Five minutes, nine seconds to go. Seattle down 10. Well, they've certainly got a hold right now. Arizona's done a nice job in the second half against this stout defense. They'll run it again. Johnson. Nothing. Sean Shedd in on the tackle. David Johnson. Trying to close in on 15 consecutive 100 yard games from scrimmage. He's a little shy of that right now. He's at 90 yards total on the game. Pretty incredible, John. Seattle 38 and 5 at home since Russell Wilson has been the quarterback. They lose today that it was six losses and three of them to one team. Uh, cliches become cliches because they're often true. That's why everybody says division records, uh, division games, throw the records out. Here's Johnson gets a couple good blocks and then a swim move to stay in bounds. Talk about a little subtlety there. That'll keep the clock going, I believe. Or did they mark him out? Oh, they ruled him. Okay, he stepped out before that. Okay, so before that down, he did step out to stop the clock. Let's see. Ooh. It's interesting so Seattle may get a break. So interesting when you talk to Carson Palmer it's as if they they feel whether it's true or not they've got the formula you can't let things snowball. If Cliff Abel sacks you your left tackle is still in his stance. You can't let it bother you. You got to run the football. They do have a formula for success. Third and four Palmer back throws near side incomplete. He was going for Nelson again. Sherman was there. And now you would think a field goal try for Kenton Zero. And that's what you'll get. It's where the length of Richard Sherman. 6-3 at cornerback. He's just got longer arms than JJ Nelson. He reaches it out and deflects it. Kenton Zero has missed seven field goals on the year, including one today from 53 yards out. This has been no gimme. It's a 42 yarder. Bobby Wagner blocked one earlier in the year against Arizona. Not this time, and this one is good. Catton Zero gave that one plenty of leg, and Arizona extends to a 13 point lead, 4 10 to play. John, you got the second best defense in the league in Seattle, and Arizona's put 17 points on them in this fourth quarter. And Kevin, the thing they've always been great, you may get some yards, points, they don't let you in. I mean, New England's got them by like two tenths of the of a point coming into this game. But I mean, what an impressive effort by the Arizona Cardinals. Like Carson Palmer said, they've got everything to play for, but we got a lot of pride to play for. They're they're showing a tremendous amount of pride. I know it hasn't been pretty for Seattle today, but I'm, I'm with you. I think Arizona's played a great football game. We're telling you about how the home dominance of Seattle. They're also seven and zero at home this year, so it's. Certainly not what everyone expected. And they'll start on their own 25. So stuff from early today. We want to look at the Packers are just on fire right now. Aaron Rodgers threw for four touchdowns, no interceptions. I don't think anybody wants to play them. That'll set up a game with the Lions next week for the division. Falcons, well, they are rolling and they won easily today. If they, if the Bucks continue to lose, they will win the division today. And the Titans lose. The Texans with a win can win. The division Texans play tonight and they lost Marcus Mariota too with an ankle injury. Of course the other big story from this afternoon we heard Kurt tell us the Raiders were in first place in the two seed right now. They're, they got a win over the Colts but they lost Derek Carr to an injury. No word on the seriousness of that. Here's Wilson. A lot to do in a short amount of time. It's Curse with a first down across the 40. Obviously time a factor down 13 points. Two score game though. I mean it's it's certainly possible. You just have to move with some quickness with some urgency as you see the Seahawks doing that. Four man rush near side nobody home looking for curse. 
I know different games, different game plans, different results, but just on your point, it is amazing. Jimmy Graham's got one catch for six yards. And I think only two targets that I can remember. Yeah, it, it, you know, and, it, and some of it is centered around the fact when your offensive line is struggling to protect, sometimes you got to keep that tight end in. I would tell you, put a different tight end in the block. Right. Extend him, play him as a wide receiver, and certainly don't have him on the sidelines. On second down, Wilson. It's Richardson who makes the catch. Another first down. Seattle will hurry to the line. I'm sure, they'd love to save those timeouts when they're on defense if they could. If they could score with enough time left to even have that decision. First down. Wilson steps up, going to run. Nope, he'll dump it off to Collins who slips and then scurries forward inside the 35. Really smart by Kevin Minter right there at the end of that play. He basically guarded the sideline, says, You're not coming this way, turn it up. Again, the clock continues to run. Wilson, pressure up the middle, in trouble. Down he goes. It's another sack for Arizona, number six of the day. That time it's Okafor. And a timeout first from the Seahawks. Calais Campbell again, just eating up blockers. And oftentimes it's not the guy who gets the sack that really causes the sack. Calais Campbell causes that in. Here comes the rest of the Arizona Cardinals D line to finish him, led by Okafor. You know, John, obviously Seattle's trying to win this game, and a lot can happen even if they don't next week. Who knows the way this league's been? Yeah, you know, they've got some question injuries tough today. I mean, they lose their starting running back and their number two wide receiver today. That's been a tough day for them. Cam Chancellor came back, but how Effective is he mm -hmm. going to be? Is he going to be healthy? Thomas Rawls out. Lockett looking like he's out for the year. So not a good day for the Seattle Seahawks. Can they overcome? Sure they can, but it's getting a lot tougher. Still time, under three minutes to go. But they need two touchdowns. That's the issue. Wilson fires him. There's Jimmy Brown with a catch and a run, rumbling on in. Touchdown. Seems like a pretty simple formula, John. Should wake the offensive staff of this Seattle Seahawks. I think it's a really good offensive staff. Somehow they've forgotten that they got an all world tight end in Jimmy Graham, and you better feature him, not just have him in your game plan. You ought to be featured because he can do things like that. He's a threat down the middle of the field. Linebackers are too slow, defensive backs too small. That's why tight ends are mismatches and they aren't using them. They need to moving forward. Hauschka the extra points. It's a six point game. This game's not over because Seattle's got two timeouts and the two minute warning here, so they could certainly kick away. Here comes Jimmy Graham. He's just going to hit that scene. And then watch him once he gets the ball. So athletic. Showing a lot of will here. Carrying Justin Bethel into the end zone. John, I think you knew when he came over here from New Orleans, he wasn't going to have 15 targets a game. This offense is different and, and different personnel. You just, he's got to have more than two targets going in the fourth quarter. That, that's proof right there. There's no doubt. And Russell Wilson, we thought, you know, we, we did a game earlier where he had two back to back 100 yard games. We thought he had learned what Drew Brees eventually did. It's not a. It's not a stupid play to throw it up to Jimmy Graham. He, he earns that trust. It's not going to be picked. The worst it's going to be is an incomplete pass. At times, even when he's covered, he's not covered. Give him an opportunity. You know, Seattle's dealt with a lot on offense. They've had an offensive line that has underperformed big time. Quarterback has played through multiple injuries. And they have persevered through a lot of it. They really have. And now they're. They got a chance. It's all you could ask for. The offense did their job there. Now it's the defense who has given up points. Or can they make a stand? They've got their hands team out here. Whether Seattle kicks deep or not, we will see. They have the two timeouts. Also got the two minute warning. So they certainly could, but they haven't stopped Arizona in this fourth quarter. Hauschka will kick it off. 
Patrick Peterson is going to run and chase after it inside the five. Here's Peterson. He's going to slide down. And so 244 to go. Now Bruce Arians, John, I'm fascinated here because you know <laughs> he's had plenty of games like this and he's thrown it for the win, but today it's been the one game. It has been the run game, and that's been the formula. I think we also know Bruce Arians' personality. He's not afraid to go against the grain, but I can tell you one thing, it's going to get loud in here. Here we go on first down pitch to Johnson sweep buried that's one stop and a timeout for the Seahawks Chancellor was there Kevin Cam Chancellor looked healthy right there yes he did <laughs> and it'll be a second down with 239 to go I'd like to welcome those of you who watch the Saints take down the Bucks 31 24 that means that the Falcons have won the NFC South here with Pam Oliver John Lynch I'm Kevin Burkhart CenturyLink Field in Seattle. Arizona has really dominated for most of this game, but now Seattle with a touchdown to Jimmy Graham has it at a six-point game. Arizona backed up with a second and 12. Seahawks have one timeout and the two-minute warning, and they're trying to keep pace with the win would keep them in the number two spot. Arizona has mixed the run, stayed with the run all day. Interesting to see with the tackle for loss. Do they continue to stick with it and trust their defense who's been really good today. Second down. They're going to throw Palmer goes for Fitzgerald for a side Sherman hits him immediately and he goes out of bounds. So Seattle doesn't even have to take another time out there. Wow. Oh. And again the design of the play taking a minute. He's in a position where. Not a whole lot of options for Larry Fitzgerald. But one thing he's got to do is turn it up and get down and stay in bounds. This place is bonkers right now, John. Third and eight, play clock and one. Do they get it off? Palmer, hit as he throws. And it's incomplete. The broadcast booth is shaking. Now the question is did they get this ball off? Was there a timeout called by Arizona? Before the ball was snapped. <laughs> before the ball was snapped, Arizona called his second charge timeout of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. There was no play. I mean, in defense, there's no way you could hear it. <laughs> there's just no way you could hear it. But it saves the Cardinals for now. Look at him cobble at Carson Palmer. Yeah, Pete Carroll, so much emotion. Hey, Kevin, I grew up in California. I know what an earthquake. It just felt like an earthquake in here. This place was shaking. <laughs> what an electric crowd they have here. They feed off that emotion. I don't know who called it. It's got to be Bruce. Got to be Bruce, right? We'll do it again. 2:34 to go. Arizona by six. Third down. Ponder pressure. He's in trouble. Gets rid of it. Incomplete. My goodness, KJ Wright. Part of being a really good blitzer, you got to learn how to time it. And watch KJ Wright time this thing perfectly. He is on Carson Palmer before anything is open. Carson Palmer does the only thing he can. What hurt the Arizona Cardinals there? Look at Richard Sherman back to receive this punt. How about this? So here's the punt by Wild. Wow. It's short, and we got a penalty flag. I believe we do. Back by the punter. I didn't see any contact or anything. It was an unbelievable turn of events.
Let's sort out this penalty. It's obviously a big call. During the kick, holding number 33 of the kicking team. Seattle is elected to add the 10 yards to the end of the play. Seattle's ball first down. Here's Kerwin Williams. He's working the wing. And there's the hold. It's Doug Baldwin. How about Doug Baldwin being in there, rushing the punter? Kerwin Williams grabs him, brings him down. I think Doug Baldwin sells that pretty well. How about having your starting receiver? That's how important this game is to Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson has 21 fourth quarter or overtime comebacks. It's the most since he's been in the league. Can he make it 22? About to find out. Seattle trying to hang on to the two spot. Just moments ago, it looks like they were dead. Now they've got plenty of time. 2.22 left and a timeout, along with a two minute warning. They need a touchdown. And they will give it to Collins. That's not going to do very much. Calais Campbell on the hit. Looks like Seattle is content to take this down to the two minute warning. There is plenty of time. Time is not an issue. Plenty of time for the Seattle Seahawks. Arizona just took no time off the clock and left a timeout on for the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, well, we've got high drama in Seattle. Quite a finish on tap. Two minutes ago, Seahawks football. They need a touchdown. Can they get it? That's the playoff picture. Falcons won today. They won the division with that. Bucks lost. To move back out of the playoff picture, and the Seahawks trying to maintain pace with that number two seed in the first round by. They need a touchdown. Two minutes to play from Seattle. Second and 11. Five man rush. Wilson's going to air it out for Doug Baldwin. He's got it. Doug Baldwin inside the 20. And they're going to mark him out of the 15. I'll tell you what, Kevin, they ran the motion early. That told Russell Wilson. We got man to man. Get your eyes out of the backfield, Patrick Peterson. Look at Doug Baldwin. Instead, Doug Baldwin gets that separation. I don't know what he's looking at. Man to man means cover your man. He doesn't. And Doug Baldwin says thank you very much. It's unbelievable. Seattle did nothing offensively in the first half, John, and they have really turned it on in this second half. Doug Baldwin, 13 catches, 171 yards, and a touchdown. Wilson's at 339 passing, and now the play clock getting down to one, and Seattle will call their final timeout. But time now is not an issue. They got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Kevin, I was saying, this is very emblematic of Seattle's season. This game, kind of a, a microcosm of their season. You look at the season, injuries throughout. Mm -hmm. They haven't played really well. Their offensive line unsettled. They're still 9 4 and 1. This game, they've been injured. Tyler Lockett looks like he broke his leg. Cam Chancellor out at one point. Thomas Rawls, but yet here they are in striking distance to go ahead. They just never go away. They are as resilient as they come, and that's the thing that makes this team great. You're right. I mean, it hasn't been the, maybe as picture perfect as some of their other seasons, but you know what? 9 4 and 1, and they still, with 154 to go, do control their own destiny for a first round bye. And they have really turned it on the second half. I would say this Arizona has kept them in this game some decisions late in the game in terms of clock management throw Larry Fitzgerald going out of bounds but the play call to put him in the situation throwing an out route there they haven't used the clock wisely Seattle 15 yards away from the tie Wilson and a keep on his own lead getting to the edge Russell Wilson inside the 10 and he's out of bounds at the eight. Remember C.O. Moore, the big fourth down in this same situation. He made the play, but Russell Wilson says, let's go at it again. This time he gets the corner. Russell Wilson seems to have the ability to will himself, his team, when they need it most, to make the plays. He's got 378 yards of offense as Russell Wilson today. Most of them in the second half. They clock and one, they get it off. Wilson gonna keep it again. This time he's in trouble and he's taken down. It's Seal Moore. Didn't get fooled that time. And a third down and long is coming up. See Russell Wilson, usually that zone read, if this guy's out there, you give it. 
but C.O. Moore does a great job of what you call a fallback technique. He shows inside, then falls back outside real quick. Big play for a guy filling in for one of their best players in Dale Buchanan. Obviously, two down territory. They need a touchdown. Minute 16 to go. Got to get to the five. Wilson throws near side. Richardson, is he going to dive? Is he going to get there for the first down? The spot says yes. He's got the first down. Paul Richardson delivers. And he got out of bounds. Now, again, time not an issue. Now, Kevin, if I'm the Seattle Seahawks, this is why you traded an all pro center, Max Unger, for Jimmy Graham, and you're paying Jimmy Graham the big bucks because down in this area is where these big time tight ends, the former basketball players, where they pay dividends. Dial up your best play to Jimmy Graham. There's Graham in motion. First and goal. Fake the run. Wilson to throw, got to lock it, Enzo, touchdown! We are tied! Unbelievable. It's Paul Richardson, by the way. <laughs> I would tell you this, extra points in this matchup have been to anything but automatic. Russell Wilson has some heart. First half where the offense couldn't have looked worse. And they've stormed back to tie it. They were down 13 with 250 to go. And then the touchdown to Graham, the three and out on the D, and this for the lead. And this has been no gimme. He's missed four extra points on the year. You imagine Matt Ryan on his couch watching this? <laughs> Goodness. Here we go. Give Seattle the lead. House go. It's no go. Are you serious? You can't even make it up. It's unbelievable. They put great pressure on. It's just a miss, though. But I tell you, when you put pressure, it's almost like a quarterback. When you put pressure around kickers, when you're flying at his feet, it affects them. Look at Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson's face. I can't believe it. That's unbelievable. I mean, you go back to the first match between these two teams when Kenton Zero and Hauschka missed gimme field goals in overtime to win it. And now, after all the dramatics, that, and we're still tied. You know what this new extra point rule, backing it up, has done? It's, it's employed a lot of sports psychologists because something that used to be automatic, these kickers shaking in their boots, and we've seen it over and over, it is far from an automatic play. Richard Sermon. John, this is a pretty good job because this game goes in overtime. You're going to need that guy. That's a, yeah, and you're going to need him in the playoffs. So you got to restore the confidence. One thing I'll say about this team, they are a team. They stick together. Sometimes some controversy. They always stick together. And that's great leadership by Richard Sherman, Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson. It was an unbelievable game. Here is the kick bounced in the end zone. Arizona's got a minute left and a timeout. They, they've got time here. Go back to the last meeting, and it was a def defensive battle. But here's Hauschka with a chance to win this in overtime. It looked like this was over, and uh, you couldn't shank a short field goal any more than that. I mean, Hauschka's an excellent kicker, but he missed in Arizona. He missed an extra point here. Unbelievable. Wide left. It's been some game. What a way to spend Christmas Eve, John Lynch. It's been something else, and we're not done. A minute to go. Tied at 31. Arizona's got a timeout to play with here. Palmer. Back past time. Throws over the middle, incomplete. Seattle is out of timeout, so they cannot stop the clock. Cannon Zero, here's his deal. His career long is 60 this year, but he was short on a 53 order earlier, and there is zero wind here today, so who knows 
with these kickers. Zero win, but I think damp air. It's a heavy year here in Seattle. The big thing, can Carson Palmer, can they protect him? The Seattle rush always feeds off this crowd, and this crowd is alive. Second and ten. Palmer back. Going to dump it off to Johnson. Over the middle has room. David Johnson sprinting ahead. And he's out to the 38, where I presume that Arizona would call a timeout. And they do. That's their final timeout. So another game where David Johnson is over 100 yards from scrimmage, make it 15 in a row to start the season. That is ties a record from Barry Sanders for 15 in a year. No one's ever done it 15 in a row to start the year. And here's what you're looking at no timeouts left. Figure John Arizona has got to at least get to the 40 of Seattle, have at least a shot. Look at Carson Palmer right here. He don't like the ball. I don't know whether he's pointing, saying that's a kicking ball. I don't know if he's talking about inflation. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows with these quarterbacks and their footballs? 62, what's that mean? First and ten. Palmer has time, lets it fly, coming deep for Golden. Did he haul it in? No. He caught it, but he was out of bounds. Heck of an effort. DeAndre Elliott was on the coverage. One thing these Arizona receivers have done consistently this year, they don't leave any margin for error. You run the red line. In practice fields across the league, they have a red line about eight yards from the sideline. That's why they call it a fade, but you got to give room for the fade. Carson Palmer throws a perfect ball. Brandon Golden, Britton Golden, leaves no margin for error because he gets pushed to the sidelines. Right, so you're saying Palmer actually threw a good ball, but nowhere to go. Second and ten, 41 seconds left. Play clock at three. To get it off. Palmer sees pressure going far side of the field. Great adjustment by Johnson. What an adjustment as he beat Cam Chancellor. This guy can play. I mean, he can flat out play. He's a wide receiver. He's a running back. Great body control. Great receiving instincts. He's just a special football player. They've used him all day running it. They are in field goal range, John. Down at the 33. This would be a 51 yarder for Catanzaro if they don't go any further. But remember, no timeouts left. They've got to be careful. Palmer, blitz coming, temporarily picked up, fires incomplete. And again, we remind you, Canton Zero has missed seven this year. This is certainly makeable with his leg strength, but this is, again, no easy one. <laughs> what a game, back and forth, back and forth. Looks like the Seahawks were out of it, then it looks like the Cardinals are out of it. And they just keep playing. So a third down and ten. John Brown does not have control of that ball, never brings it in. Be nice to get some yardage to help Canizero out. As it stands right now, it's a 51 yard field goal. That was a dangerous play call here. No timeouts left. Third and ten. Quick throw. Fitzgerald's got it. Now you got to get up there and get in there. It's not a first down. You can't spike it. You've got to get the team in and kick the field goal. It's fitting. You go to one of the greatest receivers of all time in the biggest situation. Ten, nine seconds. Ten and zero from 43 yards to win it. Five seconds. Will he get it off? The kick is up and it is good. A stunning win for Arizona.
They ran the field goal unit onto the field. They couldn't stop the clock. And Catanzaro drills it home for a stutter. 34 31, Arizona. What a fourth quarter. <laughs> Unbelievable game. And the upset. And Seattle, that chance of getting a first round bye, just took a hit. What a game in Seattle. Arizona wins. We're back in a moment.